Feel free. Uh, Marcea? Yeah. Oh, check. Hello. I mean, Hello. You sound 15. <laughs> Jeez. Betty? Yes. You sound 14. Let's make that a little louder. Yes. And then I sound 52. Fantastic. Marcea, the way yeah. these cameras work oh. is um, sometimes. Did you bring all of this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> That's a lot. Um, did you fly? Did you pack all? How many suitcases did you have? Four including suitcases. Including a book bag. So did you, were you premium economy, economy, business, or did you pay extra for the luggage? I prefer not to talk about it, but <laughs> business. Hey, I'm on my way to London visiting Betty and to record some podcasts. I thought let's start from the plane ride over to London and let's just get into it, shall we? Landing in London, very excited. Look how cool these seats are. They go all the way back. Traveled with his friend who was in economy. <laughs> um, yeah, my friend, uh, shout out to David Sullivan, a post Instagram here. Uh, he was filming. He's poor. <laughs> I don't want to. We'll, we'll wait till he's on. Um, he <laughs> was filming in Australia and he flew from Sid Gold Coast to Sydney, Sydney to Los Angeles, took a car from LAX to Burbank, flew from Burbank to Vegas, Vegas to Chicago, Chicago to Cleveland, where I was. To stay with me for a couple of days before then all of that was to get to you just to get to me to get to cleveland he's a big family. fan of the podcast <laughs> and then to eventually get to london and then he flew to london for fun and economy yeah because well he didn't need to be back to la for a couple weeks and like i'm going to london but not in time so he came to cleveland to be with my family where's first. he staying when he was he left a oh, couple days ago got it. Okay. but he was staying in a hotel uh, not too far away the last two days Stayed here on the my floor. floor. My one oh, because that doesn't. Pl- oh, yeah. And it's cozy. Well, just say the any. And I felt obligated, kind of. He's like, "Could I stay with you guys?" And Betty's like, "Of course." Yeah. And I said, "No," but David, David, I know, and my parents even said this to me: if the roles were reversed, not only would David let me stay here, he would give me the bed. You know, uh, he doesn't care. He was, I said they should take the bed together, but they, they won't sleep in the same bed. Oh, you bed. and David. Yeah. I don't want And then that. I'll sleep on the couch. He sounds sit. like a better person than you are. <laughs> that's that's funny that you say that. Um, he is uh, probably, he's easier going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And definitely. Doesn't and have I'm boundaries. Not, um, he, he has his own boundaries, but they're not as, they're not as many. <laughs> right. And, and also things are we're all different. He's an economy, mm-hmm. right? He has the whole row to himself, but oh. it's still, you know, small. He's in an S, sleeping the entire way. I have the the, the things over my eyes in the in the pod, and I just I can't go to sleep. Your snacks is money. I'm just eating. I'm <laughs> eating, eating the, the, the Hanukkah gelt, chi- you know, the the gold chocolate coins. I don't want him here. It's not that I don't want David here. I don't want a third person. So did you say that? You said that. I did. Did you? Of course. That's why he. Yeah, I said Betty said said that you oh, could. Oh, when he said yeah. And then oh, but th- but then then he bought uh, a hotel. We were maybe gonna travel like the three of us somewhere. Mm-hmm. We didn't, and David thought well, he would rather extend his hotel than cancel it early. So the last two days he didn't get the hotel. I don't know mm-hmm. if he thought maybe we were traveling the last two days. So the last two days he he brings it up here, and Betty's like it's totally fine. I which, did make him a cute little bed. I made but on like what? A, like, do you have a, on, a I had like a, like a sheet, that, like a 
kind of like thick bedding that I laid down. Like I made him like a proper little. Oh, he was bed. comfortable. He loved it. We watched TV. My TV hasn't been mounted yet because Rick bought me off my birthday, and we had it there. And we like he like lay on the floor. And we just sat. Here. It was a fun. Set. It was it was definitely more fun than I, I anticipated. A lot of anxiety. Yeah. Can I tell you why you should be doing those things right now, and why it was? What worth do you guys it? think? Should she tell us? <laughs> because I think the older you get, the less you do that kind of thing. And there's something so special and wonderful and even romantic about looking back on those moments and as you age speaking from experience well, yeah, you, you do it, know you do it less and less so i feel like it's a wonderful beautiful thing that you look back and like i oh, remember when you slept on our floor and then one day you know he'll go out i agree and have his own. so there's something really special do you about don't it. think though as girls you just do stuff like like my girlfriends will come over here when he's not here and sleep in bed with me we'll just like have sleepovers like all the time but don't you think that's different than i mean that is nice because it's a sense of connection and like right. sweet versus like maybe being a, like you know sleeping on your friends right thing. yeah i know you when they're trying to like, have it like you guys are the pod but then he he was not part of it yeah 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 i don't know if that's coherent he, the, the the thing is so there's a lot of so funny uh, he's also so funny there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of stuff in here you know like the cameras and the lights and there was a tv we had to move stuff around it was my pleasure this is great it's what the podcast is but with all of that we're literally stepping over and it's not the most convenient, but that's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like, I've made a decision. I'm in a relationship with Betty. We're in one together, actually, if you want to be. <laughs> and there's some things you co-sign. We'll share a toilet. Mm -hmm. We'll share a shower. Mm -hmm. After my friend David, not that he's dirty by any means, but every time he goes poop and he poops, he poops like I pee, <laughs> right? A lot. It's a common I'm so jealous. Do you don't pee a lot or you don't poo a lot? No, I don't shit a lot. Oh, oh you do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Maybe that's where it's a lot of this... Uh, Angst. Uh, ...comes from. <laughs> every time he poops, we clean the toilet. Betty did it. We clean the toilet. But, like, every time he shower, like, there's a personal there's a personal space boundary that I have with the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. But yes, like I said, and you're right. It, looking back, it was nice. I missed him when he left. I would yeah. love for it again. But, you know, get a hotel and come over all the time. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for coming over. Nice Let's stop you. talking about David who's not here anymore. Talk about your poops. Although I have to say, just in case, we love David. David's one of my best friends. He's so and if so, one of my friends had to poop, he's one of them. I just didn't want any of them to. We'll Got be right it. back after word from our sponsors. Oh, hi, ladies. Hi. 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 This episode is brought to you by Noom. Wait a minute. My neighbors have lost so much weight and they do Noom. Sign up for your trial and get psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goals at noom.com slash Tyso. That's Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash Tyso to sign up for your Noom trial today. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Scribd. With Scribd, you get access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, comic books, magazines, newspapers. It's off the charts. Is it just written or audio too? Audio too. And if we got a deal for you, go to try.scribd.com slash Tyso to start your free 60-day trial. That's try.scribd.com slash Tyso to get 60 days off Scribd for free. That sounds amazing. I am signing up today. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is easy, accessible therapy for anywhere in the world. Yeah, from the comfort of your own couch. BetterHelp makes it easy and affordable to connect to a licensed therapist online. Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. And we're back. Professional, geez. Am I allowed to have a, a minor do that kind of thing? Because what if we advertise something, you know, adult? Did you look like a little, little kid when you were like 19, 20? When you were like, I oh. don't feel, I feel like I look age appropriate. But what do you, you mean when I was younger? Um, did you look like a baby? I, I don't know. I, no, I feel like I, I got titties young, so I feel like I sort of always felt sort of sexualized. Right. right. You didn't notice. Move the microphone for a second. <laughs> Put the clothes back on. <laughs> uh, okay. Are you staying? Because I want to do this better if you are. Mm. No. I'm happy with you saying, but I'm not, that's making me uncomfortable. No, no, I'm, I'm going to go it. in a minute. I want you guys to have like a proper conversation. Betty, Betty was my co-host for one of the episodes and it oh, did amazing. so well. And people are saying that she needs to be like. Yeah. I hate being on camera. Oh, you do? You like being on camera. You have to imagine you like being on camera, you're right? You're used to it. You're probably used to it. It's more from, I mean, it doesn't feel like on camera because they're 
small. I mean, there's not pe- like a crew, so it does feels less intimidating. Ooh, you're in. Could you go? Could you expand on that? We said you like being on camera. I well, guess which the intimidating. Piece of it? The it's it's a crew that feels intimidating, not the fact that it's being recorded. I like in the moment. I don't love after that. Like people can then see it. Will you watch yourself in something? Because I um, will not. Yeah, I don't love it. Right, that's the bit Never. I don't like. Yeah. I don't want to ever see it. I don't want to have to like hear it. I don't want to. Oh, I'll watch it. you. Really? I not, I just you never like you, you don't mind it there are some things i see myself in and it makes me sick and i'm i want i'm done um and i need to have plastic surgery and everything needs to be fixed oh, no mine's less from hope i hope i don't think as much insecurity as it was an experience that i was a part of that i lived so that that and then i feel like i've moved through it or moved on from it right. so to rewatch it feels sort of i don't know something like i've already had that experience maybe but then i guess but what about something you're experience. good at like when i see something that i'm i think i'm funny in i on all I the time love watching it. <laughs> What do you mean? What I miss? Like it's on, on a loop. Like, she said it's on all the time. What is? What, what am I Something that you like with you in it. I was just saying. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Have you seen the sixth lead, by the way? I did it a while ago. I will say that the little, the webisode, web yeah. series you made, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You should be I was proud just of it. I that as a joke, but thank you. No, it's, it's. We'll cut to a it, clip. Listen, I know my position on the show. I'm not looking to be the star. I don't want to be the star. I'm the sixth lead, and I get that. The seventh lead. I just want to talk to you about some ideas that maybe I could put into this to make this a little funnier. I've been trying to get a Papa Shop B story in since season two. I got a, a Rick Gladish. Are you, are you sure you're not Rick Gladish? Yeah. Yeah, how nice would it be if you could do something other than talk about boobs on the show? Thank you. Can I just pitch you some things? Yeah. All right. It encompasses your sense of humor so well, I feel. You know, I made that before I ever saw episodes. Oh. And after making it, um, I don't remember who, but somebody said it reminds me of episodes. That's mm-hmm. when, that's why I went to watch it. Maybe that's why I like the sensibilities of it, because that's my yeah, sense of humor. It's, it's got like a through line. To it. How, how would you describe the sensibilities of what episodes is that is you? Um, comedically, I would say it's grounded. With, not me, is it, but what I like about it is it's grounded, it's witty. Um, it feels very real. It's easy to invest in. It's not shticky, even even though I love I like that kind of comedy as well. But it's just very. Um, it's so good. It's so it it's really so so good. It's so well written. It's also um, that and uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm yeah. and uh, The Office. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like. The Office technically is a, a mockumentary, but they all have that same, like, everyone's playing a real version of themselves and they're mm-hmm. showing off a fake version of themselves. Mm-hmm. I feel like podcasts are kind of like that. Mm. You know? I guess depending on which one. They're so varied now, but yeah. Comedy podcasts. Like, I sometimes I'm paying attention to the animation and wanting to make jokes. And then sometimes I'm trying to have a real conversation. And the challenge I find with a podcast is being present enough to allow whatever it is. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Betty? That's yeah. true for life, though. Hard to be present. Can I ask you how you got episodes? Yeah, just auditioning. You literally just auditioned for it and got it straight away. Had you done much before it? I had done, I feel, I'd done a lot of drama before, so I don't know at the right. time if I was really considered funny or a comedic actress. Mm-hmm. And then I auditioned, but multiple times. You had done obviously. the Conan sketches before that. I'd done that, yeah. I mean, I'd done, but I think, you know how you're seen as whatever you're sort of doing? Right. So I don't think I'd... I'm trying to, I'm so bad at remembering, but I feel like I probably hadn't had anything that successful that was comedy maybe at that time. I can't remember. Was but, it written by British people or was it? No. So they're an American couple, right. um, David and Jeffrey, and they, David was one of the co-creator friends. Um, right. And then his, his partner, his life partner and writing partner, Jeffrey Cleric, they wrote it oh, together. Oh, that was their connection to, to um, LeBlanc because of Friends. Yes. Yeah. Uh, didn't you film here though? We filmed, yeah, we filmed here and a little bit in America, but so I... But even before I like was more permanent here, we were going, I was going back and forth for that for years. We were more permanent here. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. So here, like owning a house here is very, like, it's yeah. obviously very permanent. There, I was like, when I was shooting that, I was coming here staying in a hotel and working. Right. But, um, but I think that that's part of what gave me the foundation to feel so comfortable in this country. Right. Because even though my, my partner's British, so that's why I'm here now. But right. um, I think there was just like a familiarity and I sort of knew, just little things that right. that can be kind of jarring and well you know you've moved around a lot like yeah there was something nice about just sort of having been here and knowing the lay of the land a tiny bit when you were coming back and forth could you see yourself living here or were you like this is fun like were you trying to meet people and make friends and go to places and stuff like that or were you just like this is just a place to work and I'm going home 
at the time yeah at the yeah. time when i'm working i'm very unadventurous and i want to get better i'm really working on it but right. i tend to feel like i feel safe in like the confines of like okay i'm here i'm going to set like i'm Your not blink is on basically yeah, yeah. you're just focused. i'm trying to get better and be more adventurous but so because you feel like the personal life stuff takes away from like your work ethic or something or you just feel like it's too much for you oh no i just mean regardless of personal life when i'm working even like in another country another place i'm not great i'm trying to take more advantage of being in those places right. you mean like Does seeing that Is that what you seeing yeah. the like big ben what does adventurous mean like taking in, advantage of it, I guess. I mean, like, I'm in, this is, again, is before COVID, but I'm in London, and I'm going to take the Eurostar to Paris for the night, and I'm in, like, you know, really, really taking advantage of, of where you are, and I'm like, we'll walk across the street and have dinner, like. This, I'm not, this isn't a joke <laughs> yeah. question. Do you think if you pooped better, you would do more things? Um, Does that question even make sense to you? Not necessarily, because it's the same wherever you are. I notice that when, if I'm taking some supplements that, I take for a week so then I poop well for a week I'm a different person I yeah. want to go outside I want to see more things but when I have this thing in my like literally and kind of like just that anxiety in my head of something I just I just I don't want to go take mm. the Eurostar I don't think mine is related to feces but I do I, I can <laughs> I, I can understand where you're coming from I don't think that's yeah, it for I me I feel like I I am the opposite of you. Like I like mm. to go and do like every time I've been sent somewhere for work, I work in product development. And, oh, get, and guess what else she does? What? what? What's the oh, I was going to say how much you're able to. Oh, I poop a lot. But I, I poop I, in the I morning. I noticed this. People that, that poop, that my friend, more that, very my friend David who poops all the time travels to London. I really yeah, think there's something to it. Yeah, we're very spontaneous. I feel like because we like tick our box in the morning. So mm. we're like poop in the morning and then I'm like, the day's my oyster like it's just like off you now go. i'll pay attention i mean listen we can start we can we can be the control group yeah of what if you experiment. guys just also, relax for a week and then have the most inspired week of your life if you guys are adventurous <laughs> let me know that you're adventurous and that you are constipated or you poop a lot and vice versa i i don't think it's that pooping necessarily makes no, you adventurous i think it's people like us who just look so young who <laughs> can't poop are also have a little bit of this I don't know, you know, what it, you, we can't poop because of the thing or vice versa, but there's something like to like, so you're trying to control ourselves, you, can, um, you know, that it's not free, you know, our bowels aren't free. safety. Yeah. Mm. I want to ask you something that we might bleep. Okay. Okay. Um, what? Okay. <laughs> uh, may we talk about your personal life and... Yeah, of course. I'll always draw the line where I want to. So you can ask anything. How big would you say your vagina is? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have fun Funny here. Funny you should ask. Because <laughs> um, maybe that's why you're not traveling that much. Because. It's. Uh, uh, won't fit in a seat? Like what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, I guess we could we could want to pitch some no, jokes. No, I don't. Not <laughs> I mean, I guess it's chair it's not aerodynamic as <laughs> yeah. you walk in. It brings no, you move up. on, move on. You. It brings you up. I. <laughs> Love London. I came yes. here for the first time in 2018. Stayed with Ashling Bay. Shout out to Ashling, putting the Instagram handle here, and did stand up. And is that when I saw you and your no, mom? Oh. No, you saw. Uh, that was a year before. Yeah, this that was uh, last year, right before COVID. Oh, okay. okay. I had I did I, before I met Betty. I came. You here. were with Betty when I yeah. saw yes, you. Yes, but yeah. the first time, you. first time I came, I always wanted to go to London. People always said, "Oh, you should do stand up in the UK." Um, I think they were it, there was something kind of derogatory about that, like maybe it'll work there. But I always it got this thing like I want to go. I, I love British comedians. Mm -hmm. And I met Ashling in 2017. We sh have a Nate share an agent. And she is a comedian here. And she said, why don't you come? I'll get you on shows. And it was the first time I left North America. It was mm -hmm. like, I'm like, um, I'm in my third. I felt like, I'm sure I felt like an adult before this. But I felt like I got off at, the, at Heathrow Airport. Look at me. Look what I'm fucking doing. Mm. I, I, could, I bought my own ticket. You know, look... And I fell in love. And you would have thought I was shitting twice a day. I took the bus. I was doing everything. <laughs> it was like home alone in New York. <laughs> so I wanted, to, I, I loved London. I had a thing for it. Um, Bill Lawrence, who mm -hmm. you know, he was on the pod. Um, he was filming Ted Lasso here. Mm -hmm. Before he was right filming first season, he said, Rick, I'm filming a show. I know how much you love it. You could come stay with me. Aww. Incidentally, I was talking to Betty that we met online. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came and I met her. I came and I, I'm like... I want to live here. Mm -hmm. I want to, if I can make a living here, I would move here. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Because Betty kind of asked this. Did you get that experience? Do you want to stay here? Ideally. 
I much prefer it to Los more per- Angeles. Yeah, when I say, I mean, I guess be based or be more permanent. Yeah, I yeah. much prefer Los I want to do okay. what you're doing. I want to mm-hmm. have my place in Los Angeles. If I yeah. have to be there all year, I will. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm working, whatever. But like now... I want to come here and be here for yeah, months like your months. life is ideal. That's what I was doing actually before COVID because I was working so much for CBD companies. I in was like, in LA, you well, I was doing like R and D in Los Angeles and like okay. America, and then yeah. coming back here. So I had that really good balance. It yeah. was just before I met him. I want to fix this. And then this. when Keep we talking. were together, we were trying to do it every now and then. Yeah. So what was, do you guys do now? Now it's a little bit more difficult because of COVID because I'm not allowed in because I don't yeah. have a green card. Yeah. So Well, you can. You just have to stay somewhere for 14 days. Yeah, so yeah, I went know. to okay. Croatia and then went to oh. Turkey for a night. So I did Croatia for two weeks, which was really nice because obviously my mom's from there. And like yeah. my but friend who came. who has the time to consistently do that? I know. that That is a problem. I was working freelance, so it's all right. Now I'm trying to look for something permanent like in production. Yeah. And I will not be able to travel if yeah. that's the case. So that was all right. And I came and I stay for as long as I can, but I can only stay on an Esta. I haven't got a visa visa. So can you, how long are you legally allowed to stay at any point in time? Three months. Oh, three months. Yeah. And then you got to get out. And then how much distance do you need, do you need between those times? Like they don't say, but there's something called a visa run, which I know people have done where they go for like two days and yeah. then come back and like restart it. And it's really, they've questioned me now every time because yeah. I come to America so often. They're like, what are you doing here? And they'll hold me and like look through everything. Yeah. They look through like my bank statements, like through my phone, my computer, everything. Text messages. Yeah, text messages. Literally, like so invasive because they're just trying to figure out if I'm working in America yeah. illegally or something. I guess Los Angeles is the worst place to fly into because people are doing that. Right. If they deem you're in any way like illegally working, they'll... So every time you're like, I want to see the sites. No, so I'm seeing or my boyfriend. Can... Yeah, yeah. It's... But if I land, like, who is I a land, sight to see? Yeah, I, I land. Hear. What was that? You said you just saying you're seeing the <laughs> oh, sight. Oh, I'm sure I got no. it here. Um, but like when I flew into Cleveland, like Boston, Cleveland, they don't give a shit. When I fly into New York, they're just like whatever. Yeah. It's like Los Angeles because I think a lot of like young people fly in there and do work illegally. Right. I'm gonna be rude, uh-huh. uh, but do what the podcast needs. And Betty and I are uh, are possibly gonna do a podcast together oh, soon. Oh, yeah. wonderful! And I would love to be able to use this time efficiently to talk more about you yeah. and i uh, like looking at betty <laughs> well she could i would love for betty to stay <laughs> this is like a picture but just of not, that permanently <laughs> just do a portrait here we'll right do this we'll do this <laughs> freeze that <laughs> and that'll be there for the rest of the podcast betty, I'm, I, you don't have to leave Wait, I just i'd want... like to take it back i said looking but i want to acknowledge just ca- talking to you communication yeah. it's not just about it's so you. important I'm... that you say that because what's happening right now with social media and all this oh, airbrushing and these filters? Enough already. Real beauty isn't perfection. She has a brain, is my that point. That really does annoy me, though. I know. And you know what? And you're going to say, I, My I, friends think guys don't know. And I'm like, yes, they do. Don't know what? That when you filter your face and then turn up at a date, you don't look different. Right. And they're like, the guys don't have no idea. And I'm like, The guys have no idea what? They're blind. The, the girls look different in real life. We know. That's what I think. All my friends think you don't know. Like, of course we know. Enough. But but we like, but you we look at the picture with a curve, like we could tell mm. it's doctored. Also, you're supposed to look at videos. That's why I say constantly <laughs> throw up an ugly picture at least every five. Yeah. Let people know yeah, that you're fair, human. Fair, fair, fair. Throw up a like manage allow expectations. Allow a tagged photo onto your. <laughs> if my podcast is proof of anything, I try to make myself look as bad as possible. Mm. So when you meet me, you think. Wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You want me to go? Get the fuck out of here. No, 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 no. Not at all. But I do, I set it up for us. So it's it's brilliant. I have to apologize too also if the lighting isn't great for the two of us. But Mercea, Mercea? That works. Mercea. <laughs> I want to know what you thought about, because at the time you weren't dating somebody who lived here. You were working here. Did mm-hmm. you think, because I thought, and I don't think it's a coincidence that like, I didn't look for a British girlfriend, mm. but you know it was in the ethos. Is there something like London? I want to be here that you put out there. I wouldn't say not before I met, bef- like in general when I was well, working. A, yeah, so you're you're dating. I could say right. Yeah, you're dating Stephen Merchant, mm-hmm. who um, is a has been a regular on the podcast for a while now, <laughs> um, and he lives here. Obviously, well, we live together in both places. You know I'm saying before this. We, oh, did he? he we was have both? two. We have two houses. Two. Uh, he two was going houses. back and forth. As we well. own them. We own them. You're starting to look like you're in your houses. mid-twenties, though. Okay. <laughs> it's un- money, <laughs> rich, wealthy, successful. Really? Many houses. Um, but so he's a fun. British guy. He's a, yes. You know, but even, was he going back and forth? He was living in America, so he was living in in LA, right. but had a, a apartment here. But yeah, where I guess did you meet? We was, met in LA. 
Oh, yeah. I thought you met here. Yeah. Oh, coffee just kicked in. <laughs> Podcast is starting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am. I am. I'm sorry. 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 That oh, bothered me. In Los Angeles. Yeah. And did. And was it like straight away? You were just going back and forth. Well, hold other? on. Let's go linear here. I want to get to that. Okay. I want to. Um, you're doing episodes. Yeah. And you're back and forth. You're yeah. not dating him yet. For like yet. seven years. A long time. Yeah. Back and forth for a long. Time. 2011 to 2017. We did our research. <laughs> yeah. With some time is it, off. Is it really? Yeah, I have it no idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, which so that means but you, you must were have filmed in three years old when you started. Yeah. <laughs> you must have filmed in 2010. I, mean, I, have, and, I have no uh, idea. Right, it's a long I mean, Here, move, move the microphone away for a second. I want to show people what you really look like. Go like this. <laughs> no, seriously. Just go like this. No, the other way. So it's up. Yeah, look at that. It's a long chunk of time. I, uh, <laughs> I animate a lot of women um, to show their breasts. I'm going to make, make you have really <laughs> small breasts. <laughs> Good. And... Uh, Oh fuck! I keep that in, but I'm sorry about the momentum. I, I, you know, you take swings sometimes. What the fuck are we talking about? Um, she's oh, episodes, filming yeah. episodes. So you're and back I'm... and forth. Yes. And what do you do when you're here? They put you up, right? They put us up, but it wasn't long periods of time. There weren't that many episodes per year, and um, we well, here four months. Yeah, but even a lot of times I was here less because I was also doing. At one point, I was also doing a show in Can in Vancouver. What show? Uh, it was called Impastor. Do you know Mike Rosenbaum? I know of him, but I don't know him. Oh, okay. He was the lead of it, but it was wonderful. So, but then I only came for like, they shot, we just did a bunch of stuff in a few days. So it depends on the Explain the year. business of that. Because uh, the way it works with the union guidelines, when you when you're, don't live somewhere, they give you $10,000 to put yourself up. Depend Well, it depends. In the old days, yes. I don't know now, like negotiate. I mean, it's still that. That's that's is the, that still that's what it is standard. to relocate? Yeah, relocating fee. Okay. And you were technically still relocated, right? To Canada. To here. Sorry. So here is this riveting. Um, yeah, I, I want to yeah, know how this works because, like, my, I want to get on a show that films here. You're asking how can you live here and work? What information might be helpful for you? I'm just curious about the pr the process. Yeah. Like, like if I were given ten thousand dollars to come here for a few months, yeah. would I save that ten thousand dollars and just stay with Betty? Would we get a fun place and stay there for a few months? Like, I, how? Or well, did they just put you in a hotel? No, we like, were just no in a hotel. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Right. They just so put, they put you up. Yeah. Gotcha. A, a hotel that had like a little kitchen, like a. It also had right. little apartments, kind of like the Sutton like a service department. And, yeah, essentially. And did right. they, did you know that it was going to be in the states too, or was it like a British show that then came over? No, because it was Showtime and BBC. Right, 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 right. Did you was was it a hit? What I, I mean, it was critically it was Emmy nominated, so it was like it did well, you know, critically. And then and I think a good amount of people. I don't know the numbers, like I don't know what constitutes hits and stuff. It's, it's a top well, comedy to me. Well, like respected, yeah. you know, for sure. Is they've got a secretary, right? Who's got you is it, a show, and she's like really like, uh, and like. That's my friend Scarlett, I've just realized. There is a woman, there was a, yeah. Girl called Scarlett. Yeah. She's English. She's yeah. my friend, yeah. Uh -huh. I was like. You're on this critically acclaimed show. You hadn't done comedy before. What does that mean for you? What happens from that? I mean, I'd done comedy, but I don't think I was known for it. Like I'd done, I tried stand up and I had done, like I loved comedy. I just wasn't, I don't think at the time I was booking much of it. But anything I say might be wrong. <laughs> I thought you were very all these funny comedy when I credits. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved it. And then I just continued doing more and more and growing and growing. And um, it was sort of one of many that I ended up doing, which was great. But I, I would say it was the first major well-respected comedic thing I did, I think. Are well, you attracted more to Can you pull up my IMDb and I'll let you know. We'll put it up. We'll put it up in the center thing. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, you did stand up and then didn't carry on with it? No, because I... I did. I tried. I, I loved what it did for my brain. Right. I liked the idea of just having... I thought it was wonderful. Would you do a little joke for us now? I had a whole um, thing where I I had a thing about Barbie giving a hand job. <laughs> I mean, it was really one. amateur. Um, well, it's kind of with another this podcast. But, <laughs> but did you get up regularly, or you just did it for like a couple of weeks and then you? Were like, I did probably did a few months, maybe mm, definitely like six months, maybe even a full year. But it was right. not. I it, I was wasn't it wasn't you. cut out for me. Yeah, like all the, the later it's nights brutal. and yeah, traveling yeah, around yeah. and. Um, they're not pooping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in random lot. hotels. I think that's why he doesn't poop because he stays up so late sometimes. Yeah, Betty, yeah. edit like, that out. Up your circadian rhythm. <laughs> I agree. Right. It's it's, it's yeah, just a harder. It's the kind of nomadicness of it as well. Yeah, I think it's quite tough. Yeah, you don't like that kind of stuff either. Did you know that when I said Betty, I was joking? Yes. Did you know that? Yeah. 
Did you know that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are a comedian to me. Like, mm-hmm. I know you do other things, but you're you're just you're a funny person. Thanks. Is that is that what you are to you? Um, am I a funny person to myself? I'm doing a show now that's a drama. I love it. And I want to do more of those things. Yes. I'm a comedian. You don't have to be one or the other, though. Yeah, I guess that's... I I don't think. Do you not think you get typecast, though? Like like you said, people see you how they see you. Yeah, but I I also, with that, I think people... I think you can tell them what you are, you know? Yeah, I guess. I guess. I think of it... That's interesting. Is this your Amazon? Yes. I don't know. I don't think I realized it was a drama. That's great. I mean, it's a show about autistic people Mm -hmm. and the dad is cancer. I don't, and like you know, it's they call it a dramedy. Yeah. yeah, but the, I was gonna it's say in the pilot. This idea that like something is one thing or the other, like I don't know. I feel like especially now th- things are really morphing into they. You can be more than one thing. You you might right. might be a half hour and there's some sad things and also some funny beat. Like it's not. They call it a dramedy. It's going to be right. under the comedy category. But I think they only say that because it's a half hour. And I mean, for everything branding, is funny. You have to have you have to have yeah. something that people you know. I think of as a comp comedian though I I like it's a badge of honor almost like mm. because it's difficult. The, yeah, but it's it's also a language. Mm. You know and like um I'll speak from my experience when I met you. You were just easy to play with. It mm. was just like we both speak this language. Yeah. You know and non-comedians might be able to do that but all comedians can. Mm-hmm. And since you are this thing but it came later, I'm curious I'm on this drama dramedy show now and like it's not funny Mm. i mean some moments are funny and everyone is great but you know when we're behind the scenes and talking there's not that much laughing going on i'm Mm. used to that were you joking around were you the funny person i don't know i mean yeah it's so i don't know i feel like i'd have to ask the people i was around i mean i feel like instinctually humor has always been hugely important to me like i don't know if i quantified it or if i consider myself that but i appreciated in people i gravitated towards it um, I always wanted to be around funny people. Um, have a funny family? Yeah, definitely. Right. With like right. good timing and, you know, and just bringing levity to dark situations. All that stuff I right. feel like is so... I didn't always date... I did date funny people sometimes, but um, had be, have been in relationships with people who aren't. And I find that that, that was a big turning point for me of like, oh, right. this doesn't work. Right. Yeah. It's like a non-negotiable. I would yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to be with someone who's not funny. Betty's funny. Betty also, we met uh, online. So we would FaceTime, you know, I think for at least a couple months yeah. before we ever met. And it was just, we both were raised by the Simpsons, you know, and like yeah. we were able to laugh. People, I wonder, so many people are boring and like they don't need to be around that funny thing. Mm. So, Or I would just say different people have different interests and different things that they find and you have different <laughs> friends with different things. Like I've got some friends. Boring friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boring. Friends that are just like deep conversation friends. Yeah. Like kind of philosophical friends. We are yes. like, there's very little funny happening in this conversation, but like I like catching up with them. Yeah. But like I definitely don't think he could be interacting with them. Mm-hmm. I think it would be a bit more. Yeah, I get, I get um, distracted mm. if I I'm said, not laughing. I said this to my friend because my friend was like, does your boyfriend want to come tonight? And I said... In all honesty, if he's not, these people are like, just not his people. If he's mm. not playing, then he's working. Mm. Like it feels like work to him. Small talk, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I said, so like, if he's not playing, he's working and I don't need to ask him a favor to come and like work for me in a night out for mm. people that I'm not really bothered by either. Uh, I think I'm my best self when I'm able to be in the audience because mm. otherwise I'm just. He's I, on. I, I don't. I don't think this, this isn't really what it is, but the best way I could explain it is it's almost like this need for me to be the entertainment, which is not what it is. And Mm. consciously that's obnoxious, but there's something even not just for everyone, even for me, like there has to be funny and or interesting. Mm. And, and I would love to share the workload, but if that's not out there, then I'm just, I'm either being annoying or I'm just zoned out. Can you Mm. snap my birthday when you sung happy birthday (laughs) to me? I love meeting Marcea when I was in London. She is so darling and so talented. She is darling. And you know what else is darling? Reaching your health goals. And when it comes to losing weight, there's a lot of pressure out there. Would you agree, ladies? Definitely. Absolutely. Are you kidding? Even just being healthier, I think there's a lot of obstacles. Obstacles, pressure, fear, anxiety. Noom is a psychology-based approach that doesn't look at just what you eat, but how you eat. So I signed up for Noom and it took probably 15 minutes of answering questions. It was definitely thorough. After that, I downloaded an app 
And it says that you basically need to spend 10 minutes a day on this thing to keep track of what you're doing and how it's going. And that's it. And Mom Goblin, what I love about this is because sometimes I could get unmotivated. If you miss a day, you don't start over. That's why I'm excited about Noom. They help you. Yeah, and I think the other good thing about it is it helps you unlearn bad habits and understand why you may be falling off the wagon. And it's important to note, this is a health program. This isn't a diet. It does everything from not just helping what foods to eat, but helping your mood, helping you sleep, making you just feel like an all-around better, healthier person. With Noom, taking care of your health is empowering. It's not stress-inducing. Start building better habits with healthier, long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash Tyso. That's noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash Tyso for your trial. You know, so, so many times I'm looking at articles at newyorktimes.com and it makes you sign up for something and, and, and get a subscription. And there's so many different newspapers that it does that too. With Scribd, I have access to all of them. I'm going to tell you something, so will I. Because <laughs> I'm getting it. And the other thing with it is I feel like I'm always struggling with what to read or like how to find it. And this curates your choices for you. Wired.com actually referred to Scribd as the Netflix for books. And there's comic books. There's 10,000 comic books on it. Well, that works for you, Rick. You enjoy instant access to Scribd's entire library for just $9.99 a month. Amazing. I know for a fact that a lot of subscriptions to just one magazine is more than $9.99 a month. This lets you have access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, newspapers, comic books. Right now, Scribd is offering our listeners a free... 60 day trial. So Goblin Mom and Boppers and Goblins out there, do me a favor, sign up for it. It's literally free. Give it a try. You'll love it. You'll love it. And it supports us too. Go to try.scribd.com slash Tyso for your free trial. That's try.scribd.com slash Tyso to get 60 days of Scribd for free. Works, right? Okay. I wanted I wanted to add saying that's two months. I mean, I never, nobody ever gives you two months. Then Goblin Mom, that's great. I'll just snap again. Thank you. Okay. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Rick, you know how I feel about this. You know how I feel about therapy, getting any kind of help that somebody needs to make their life easier and better. And the fact that you're doing it from your own house, in the privacy of your own home, where you're not around other people, where you don't have to leave, where you could sit in your jammies, which you know is my thing. A lot of people think you need to be super depressed or something really going wrong in your life to benefit from therapy, but that's not what it is. Therapy will help you figure out how to communicate with loved ones, how to reduce stress, to come up with some questions that you didn't even know you needed to ask. Yeah, to understand yourself better. Yeah. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you could start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Take Your Shoes Off listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Tyso. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. I, I, or is it royalty free? We might have to put some music. Is happy birthday royalty free? I think so. That's yeah, why Rick, Rick was basically just performing for us, like in one tiny room at her house, and he was just like but what, performing. Well, just for like a little bit. Yeah, and then before that, then then when he wasn't, he was powered. He down. He sounds annoying. <laughs> yeah, but he was powered <laughs> down I'm in better, between. I'm better. It's not whatever. It's like <laughs> uh, whatever. Maybe I was. He's got like a surge on him, and then he powers down for like 20 minutes and just watches us all talking, and then he like powers back up. Yeah, I think to live in the world, you have to acquiesce to some amount of discomfort of mm -hmm. um, superficiality. So it's it's where is that line for you? And how can, right, so yours, yeah. is, yours is shorter than mine. I can tolerate a lot, but I do well when I'm around like-minded people, obviously, yeah. like it feels good. Um, if I have like one partner where like, if I know someone gets it, isn't on the joke, I'm fine. Yeah. Well, there's an energy uh, exchange. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be even. It's just yeah. a give and take. But also, not just they're not pooping, but when there is not, when you feel it, there's not gonna be that energy, I'm just not going to go. Mm. I had a conversation with a, a, a friend of mine about, I was never able to ar articulate this until he said it to me. I'm like, yes. The example was a good friend of his was getting married on location somewhere. He's not in the wedding. He was invited and he didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. But like, so he doesn't go. There's no questioning. Well, you know, is it me? You just don't, you always do what you want to do. Well, I don't disagree. I mean, Isn't I don't agree. Let, let me let me just let me let yeah. me put an asterisk to that. Sometimes we have to do for others, mm -hmm. and that that can make us feel good and blah blah blah. I, I get that. I'm not saying I don't mean it where you should only think about yourself. What I'm saying is, pleasing other people. I think 
I think it's too much of a good for you. Mm-hmm. How much would you care if you invited me to your wedding mm-hmm. on location mm-hmm. and you like me mm-hmm. and we after this we connect more blah 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 and I'm, I'm sure you'd want me to go but if I don't you, who cares? Yeah, well, please. It's all well. It's a, it's how important is it to that person? Sometimes you just need to suck it up and stop being such a little baby. And sometimes yeah. it's, but I think that I mean, it gets so detailed. But you might be underestimating how much it might mean to someone. To have your presence. I think it, you, I think that's part of the calculation. Yeah. I don't even think of it like that. I think that you were just kind of peasant. I think of everything really optimistically. I'm like, I could meet my new best friend. I could like, mm. so I'll kind of say yes to all experiences because I'm like, oh, you never know who you're going to bump into. You're never going to who you see or what you're going to experience. So I'll say yes because I guess that is kind of selfish. I'll say yes for me, not for them. Mm. But I won't say no. I think everyone's selfish. This idea yeah. that people ever. I'm big on. I'm is. big on this. This idea that the word selfish has bad PR. Yes. Everyone, there's no such. There, everybody cares about only. Yeah, <laughs> but I think everyone who's going to a wedding is going for the party for themselves. Right. I right. think that. I think that. I was brought up, and most of my peers are so far on the other end of. Well, we're supposed to do this, so mm-hmm. let's do this. You should show up. You should do. So I, I, I'm just saying that, like. Bring I, I I'm fine, I'm fine bringing it over here and being the bad guy mm-hmm. if it makes me feel better. But then sometimes I think you say no to things you would enjoy. Okay, I'll try and fix that. I feel I get it. I feel tired, so it's like <laughs> I, I know some people that are really great. I want a guaranteed kindness, compassion, and humor. I'm gonna get it. I know what I'm right. in for. I'm you want to know what you're ordering, basically. Yes. But what's your partner like? Is he like up for anything? Socially? He... Um, so I'm weirdly probably more open socially. Right. But he's... Is that an American versus British thing? Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Like I'll talk, you know, if I'm at a shop, I'll talk to the person and sort of get into a conversation, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Where he's polite and kind and lovely, but sort of, you know, mm-hmm. he's he's more boundaried mm-hmm. in a good way than I am. Could you give an I example? Um, Maybe, in a, you know, I might blur the lines with like employee boss relationship or something like that whereas he's just it's a very clear line that's respectful and good but i sort of he has arm's length on certain people and yeah in a good in a in a good way whereas i might then maybe potentially be taken advantage of or because i sort of don't um would you give well, people example misinterpret on that? you i'm trying to think of um i think niceties you know i'm just i'm more open so if i'm dealing with i'm trying to think of something that's like um I've been managing a lot of stuff for both of us. And I think because um, I talk a lot and how was your this and go into these long things and I'm maybe not taken quite as seriously. Therefore, I'm not. And so I've had to switch the way that I do business to be sort of just much more to the point, not a lot of small talk. And I've noticed a huge difference in the way that I'm in getting what I need. Right. People are too comfortable with you. They're too comfortable with you. Yeah. Take so there needs to yeah. be that line. I, I understand think. that. Does that have anything to do with our talking about social stuff? Anyway. Yes, because his matter. interactions and like superficial. <laughs> Nothing social matters. Social. We're all dying. Yeah. I mean, why are He's we He's very here? good at that though. He's very good at like chatting to people at the local shop and I'm quite reserved with stuff mm. like that. But then I'm better, I think, in small talk with mm. people at things. I'm mm. like, I'll just, I'll just chat to How did you and Steve meet? Uh, Emmy's party. <laughs> do I know Emmy? Oh, so he came up to you or you came up to him? Um, I had a friend go up to him first. For, for you? you? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you ask your friend to do it? I don't remember the... I mean, it was definitely... I was there to date. Oh, you went to the Emmys looking <laughs> the for night a party. Before like a party. Like, I was ready. It was your own back. So everybody walked past you like, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe. This? Almost five years. I love those nights out where you're like, maybe, maybe. When you're single you're and you're so just going just, like... Yes. And were you, did you, you already knew of Steve and you're like, I know he's funny. I'd like to meet him. I don't remember that. I mean, I, I was aware of him for sure. Um, obviously, I, I not even close to like now, of course. You hadn't slept like with him at the time. Not yet. <laughs> um, but I, he just right away, like we, bits can be so annoying, but we just immediately went into a bit and it was like heaven and mm-hmm. sparks and we were both kind of in character. I mean, it sounds so gross and cheesy, but it was so right. Mm-hmm. It was exactly right. And it just never stopped. Like it was... From and from you've been together then on for five years. So yeah. your friend says, hey, uh, you know, "Almost." Five. And then he walks over to you. I mean, I had had tequila, so I'd have to ask him on the details. Basically, like he's also kind of shy too, so sort of right. 
she got the conversation going. We started talking. Um, then we were waiting for at the valet and she suggested we all go like to a diner to get food. And I was like, I'm not hungry. What a great wing woman. I know. Huh. I'm like, is I'm she not- married? And like, yeah, no, good. <laughs> Oh, a lot of my friends are in relationships, so right. everyone was really rooting oh, for me. Oh, so she like... was in a relationship. I was like, if she's single, even more of a good wing. Oh, woman. yeah. Because those nights we were like, oh, I'll just do this, whatever. I know. But even, I think just everybody was sort of ready for and wanting right. me to like find, find someone right great. Right. What was the bit? It was sort of, um, I mean, it, it was just of the, I don't know that we were. I mean, Come I, on, you have I, to I remember like, something. I know, I'm not good at this. I like shoved her out of the way and it was like silly and goofy. And I think I was probably pretending to be a fan or something. I'd have to ask him, but. Whatever it was, it was, um, maybe he, you he, should be on your nil answer. I don't remember. It was nice. I would love to have him. <laughs> it's all Is he taller than Rick? He, yeah, he's, he's six, six, seven. That's right. I thought he was massive. How tall are you, Shorty? Six, three. six seven. <laughs> six, three. Right? Six, three. I could play between Aww. six, two and six, three and a half. Little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you met someone? Well, your boobs are little. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so sorry, I'm the worst uh, recall person. Yeah, it's okay. We should ask you about f- future things. You can just tell us. You're like we'll in two you years into time. <laughs> uh, Mercedes, Mercedes, yes, Mercedes. You, you know, Betty. I think you knew this, but Mercedes and I have a little bit of romantic I history. Know. So it looks like you don't mind dating short guys <laughs> either. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Well, you have to say I checked in yesterday to make sure that um, yeah, yeah, I'm yes. that you're okay and comfortable. We talked about age. I mean, there's ago. nothing really. Let's be honest. There's really nothing to talk about. But that's how I remember it too. <laughs> he pulls out his wallet with like a picture of you in it. He's like, <laughs> the one that got it is the yeah. one that got away in my face. Your name tattooed. Um, no, we. I had, broke it off with you. <laughs> what? So I thought we had a maybe a date. I know one for sure. I didn't I, think there was I know more of than two. one. Okay. So that could be I six or I would like to hear, Same day? Uh, Same day? Was no. it two different days? Yeah. T- I would well like to hear done. You, uh, uh, yeah, you did good. Uh, it was after the second one that I thought to myself, uh, maybe I'm too small for her. <laughs> did you just progressively get taller, guys? Like he was like, the next one, the next one went up. And then, just more and more. Yeah. I think I went lower than tall. Anyway. Um, tell, tell me how you remember the first date. This I remember how we doesn't. met, though. I remember how we met. We met at a Comedy Central party where you meet all your... All your 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 dates at some right. industry event. Yeah, that's uh, they're great. Yeah. So that I didn't remember, but I remembered tequila. Well, you we didn't really talk. We just talked for a second. You. Well, we have you a lot of Brent. mutual friends too. Yes. Yeah. Brent Morin. Yep. Worked on Conan. I assume that's why you knew him. Uh, that must have been where I met him initially. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys were saying hi, and then we did a bit, and it was uh, I think I pushed Brent out of the way, and you pretended you were a fan of mine, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> I don't know how we ended up talking after that. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know how we got to actually Me neither. being there. So who cares? Social media? I had to have been. I'm not big on Were social they? media though. Like I feel, but it must have been. How else? Who cares? I don't know. So boring. So all I remember, you picked me up. Could you stop saying my podcast is boring? <laughs> you picked Snap me up. Snap again. You just put a mustache on yourself. Thank you. <laughs> you picked me up. No, it's like, oh, let's go to a nice dinner. Something like right. this, right? Pick me up in your Mercedes SUV. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had. I didn't have a Mercedes. Do you have an Audi? Probably. An At Audi. the time. It was an SUV. Doesn't matter. It was Audi. nice. Then, then we pull up to like your Aunt Karen's Passover. Aunt Lauren. <laughs> oh, Aunt Lauren. <laughs> and that's it is his whole that. family. Of course. That's My grandma was in town. Grandma Gloria was in town. But he hadn't told them like, we don't know each other. Like there was this no. This is the first date. He hadn't said that. Nothing. We, I, sh- I have to imagine. You we, said it. No, no. I have to imagine you and I. This wasn't. It was wonderfully. It was wonderful, and it was so funny. And yeah, we already had some type of. Con- it wasn't it was this not weird. weird thing at all. No, like you were into it. Couldn't have been better. Yeah, I didn't think she was like going. Ooh. Yeah. Um. And it I, was I, hilarious. Do you remember what I told you before we went in? No. Were there, were there cousins there, Miranda, Annabella. They're so funny. Yeah. My oh, aunt Lauren, yeah, Miranda, Annabella, that. and Grandma Gloria. Love it. And I, I feel like more people. I feel possibly. Like was, anyway, I know at least them, but I remember my grandma who who lives in Cleveland. She flew in, her arms are tired. She was there and I said to you, uh, very well delivered, the truth, which is my grandma's blind. And um, uh, it's not a secret of the family, but she's a little like, she doesn't want people to know when she doesn't acknowledge it. And she's, so don't bring it up. But just when you're sitting at the table, just make sure you give extra little like, I'm putting the glass down here, just like letting her know as if you're just getting the exposition out. And you said, sure. Um, 
And my grandma's not blind. As yeah, I'm that sure would you know. fuck me right off if you uh-huh. done that to me. I would have been I so fucking I do not remember. Angry. That. Yeah, and you did it once, <laughs> and it was so sweet and funny, <laughs> and I wanted to keep going, but I thought I must have known you were lying. You didn't. You laughed. No, because the Gloria, as soon as she walked in, she would have been like, "Oh my God, you're beautiful." Do you think she was just blind and couldn't see? You? I, it it, I it, it played right. I, whatever I said, it was like she right. doesn't want people to know. Yeah, you must have set it up. There well. was one thing that <laughs> I would have left as soon as he told me she wasn't blind. I would have literally gone. I'm going to the bathroom and left. I would have been like. <laughs> in the moment, she did something, and 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 then I said, "I can't. I have to." Grandma, I also know my relationship with my right. family to where yeah. every you know everyone. I don't know whatever. It was a wonderful, as I'm sure you know, it was like yeah. a lovely But what a vibe. great date, it was, right? It was great in that it was so strange. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, and you get to meet and we talk. After that, there was no lies. It wasn't like we've been dating forever. We had just right. met. Yeah. Are we boring you, Betty? <laughs> and uh, and then I know we did a date to some art exhibit that you took me oh, to. That's very not you. Yeah, that's when I called it quits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was it, it I don't like remember that. Or something it like was that. her, her friend's that. something. You, I don't know. This is boring, but uh, it also. Is that high? No, I don't think so. Because uh, I don't, I don't um, smoke weed and use a lot of times. Try not to drink though. if I'm on a date. Oh, oh. But I don't think, I don't think so. I don't know. But I do know that uh, I, what I got out of our relationship <laughs> was, um, <laughs> what is the, what is the green fruit that looks like a vagina when you cut it in half? What? Papaya, papaya, yeah, yeah. yeah. papaya. Oh, uh, and that they're cut at Trader Joe's. No, that you and that you told me to squeeze a lime on it. Oh, oh, so I, you're I welcome. Was, Gracias. Yeah. <laughs> well done. You didn't yeah. know that before. I never had a papaya before. Mm. I grew up very poor. You're not supposed to eat the seeds. I don't know. That's maybe why I'm having these stomach issues. No, they are. Um, what are they called? Vermifuge or something? They are like anti-parasitic, anti-worm. We'll People put up in some, um, we'll put up some information tropical about places them. will eat them to like oh. expel worms and stuff. So if you guys want to <laughs> shit. <laughs> Get a papaya. So you went from, you went from, uh, uh, but we, I'll just say what I do remember is an immediate, like just got on so well. And then just a, a very natural organic progression to like a really nice friendship. I don't know where the line, I don't, I didn't remember the second day, but I just, it just felt like a, room. <laughs> she just wants to be my friend. Organic progression to like a really nice friendship. <laughs> I feel like it was a, a good. We've been, I just, I feel like we've been buddies. Yeah. So there was nothing weird. No. Weird is just like. No, not at all. I, it was. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I, I do remember feeling like um, uh, when I when we went out a couple of times. I haven't. I hadn't had. Maybe I still haven't. But definitely then hadn't had too much experience like dating. Yeah. Right. Like you kind of. Meet I some, had. Oh yeah. Yeah, you were a pro. Uh, <laughs> you were, you're like age. you're supposed to. Uh, you said uh, next date you'll kiss me. I'll tell you when. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, thank God. Thank you. Let me know. You know what I just remembered? What? I just remembered the first date must have been the art exhibit. So the. the no, it's funnier if the family's a first. So don't ruin it. Well, whatever. Th- I know that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. You know what? It may be. Maybe it was the family thing. And then we spent the day with each other after. Because I do remember. Betty, I'm sorry. But we <laughs> did. We did kiss. Fine. Yes, I know. No. Yes, you did kiss. Do you not remember? Oh, oh my you god, really don't it's remember so unrememberable. I am. This is so funny. You felt my. You felt, no, you stop. Felt, you felt my, I thought that's why you decided to go with Steve Merchant because you felt how big my schwanz was, and you thought that I needed to date a tall guy. We did not have it chemistry. It does. I, I, mean, I guess. You, I mean, I speak for us both when Wait, I say that. Wait, how did you bend down so to kiss her? We were well. We kissed. We kissed in her apartment, and then she felt my penis <laughs> above my pants. <laughs> above my pants it was an accident though her hands were here so you uh i remember uh that i i have since not that i need this skill set anymore but like i said i hadn't dated much there yeah. was a few girls that like you like hi nice to meet you and then we become friends and you want to be my girlfriend mm. and it takes me a little bit to kiss somebody mm. and this was a an experience did where, i kiss you no uh. but i do remember you you have to remember this tell me <laughs> so we're in my car and this was one of the few examples of like here's a situation oh we went out on a date i'm now supposed what? i'm supposed to kiss the girl and i talk about this as a bit where i'm very uncomfortable i don't kiss on first dates i've since set this boundary mm-hmm. because i'm what if she doesn't want to kiss me um it's terrifying and what if she only how will i know if she just kisses me because i don't want it to be awkward i'll never i don't have enough information mm. we'll kiss the second date 
But this was a, a situation where I hadn't quite figured this out yet. And you met my family. It was after this. And like <laughs> we were laughing and you're sitting in the car and okay. Uh, and I parked and I remember I wanted I wanted to just out of fear, not out of view. I wanted to just get out of the car. I don't even want to stop. Just <laughs> what am I? Do I walk you? Do I hug you? Do I kiss you? Do I? Do I say goodbye here? Do I hug you with a seatbelt on? The, the whole thing was tough. Yeah. But I made the choice of pulling over to oh. the curb to kind of delay. Like, all right, so now I have a minute to figure this out. Oh, this was. Uh, I thought like you, you would have just named somewhere. What's what that? Are you talking about? I, I pulled to the curb to drop her off. To drop her off, but instead of just pulling idle, I like kind of backed in. But I feel oh, like I you would have just named that feeling. I I have sit. I've then since yes, this was new to me. I've only gone when we, you and I went out. I'd gone on. Dates with five girls, maybe? I, I could tell. <sighs> just kidding. Shaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a sweet, naive, or was. Wait, then what happened? So I, I said I said my feelings, but yeah. it kind of, sp I spun with it. It wasn't charming and, and like, here's how I feel, here's what it is. It was, uh, I, I know I'm supposed to walk you to the door at least or kiss you, and you didn't give me a don't do it or do do it. You said... It felt like you were leading me to walk you to the door and potentially like a good night kiss. Mm. And you said something like, well, I don't want to tell you what to do, but whatever you want. Like you kept the door open for me. Oh, and I, okay. I don't, nice. I don't know. Okay. So now that you said and that. confusing. <laughs> well, I said to you, now that you're saying that, it's making me realize that, oh, I could kiss you. But now it feels like I would, I'd rather not. Oh, fuck, that's why I never shit. <laughs> and it went oh on. It went on for a couple minutes and you were very sweet about it. And I was. I'm remembering this more now. This was where I had this, I figured this out. Know what you want before you get there, Rick. Mm -hmm. This is when I figured out, have this. And I drove away and I was very uncomfortable, but you were very mm -hmm. sweet. And I think you Did text. You kiss or not? Not this time. Oh. Um, and you said you could kiss me next time if you want. <gasps> You're so nice. Yeah, and that's when I realized, that's when like, I'm going to start, That's that would make me feel much more that's safe. So yeah. I don't want to kiss you now. But I had this weird thing where I felt like if I don't kiss you, then... I'm a loser. You mm -hmm. think that I don't have the balls to kiss you or I'm a nerd because I didn't, I was very, I never, I didn't have my first kiss until I was, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, it's confusing. And it's I hard. was late to kiss and I was very scared to kiss. Mm -hmm. And up until. So how did you guys, what was your, first, or you had grown since. Yeah, we, we had I mean, known I, each other well. So we were like waiting for our first kiss. My last but three I, girlfriends too, including Betty, uh, who's the best. I met online and we FaceTimed and we talked like for, yeah. for a the while. Kiss is first. coming for ages. So yeah, so it's like, oh, I know you. I don't I don't want to kiss you because you're supposed to kiss. I want to kiss you because I want to kiss you. Well, and this was a long time ago. I but mean, I, you just have grown a lot. Every guy that I've dated has always asked to kiss me. So I don't think it's that weird. Maybe the spinning is weird. The like freaking out about it. But everyone <laughs> usually asks, don't they? They usually ask. I haven't had a spontaneous kiss for maybe I'm too, I feel like, like I have fish. I feel like I definitely have, and but it was like consensual. But right. you know, def yeah, definitely. But Maybe also, I've kissed a trait. lot of people. Right? Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I mean, guess. I bring a suitcase at the first date, so they're like, I could probably kiss her. <laughs> right? No, no, no. She's no, saying I, she comes with a lot of luggage I, and baggage. Then isn't that the joke about lesbians? I don't think. There's what a, do lesbians I, bring to a first date? Oh, a, a moving van or something. Independence, oh. <laughs> a strong personality, and they should be paid more. Yeah. At the time, another insecurity I had was I. I, I was supposed to I know that before I kiss you I'm supposed to t I'm re I remember I'm supposed to take off my glasses because you don't want to kiss somebody in the nose and it's weird but I also felt that if I take off my glasses if I take off my glasses it's also the same thing if like if I'm worried about my breath if I put a piece of gum in once I put a piece of gum in I know that you're thinking he's going to kiss me which makes me nervous and feel pressure that I have to so I have to do so if I take off my glasses now you know oh he's going to kiss me or oh yeah he's going to kiss me but I won't know nothing happens <laughs> So like, okay, I'm supposed to, it's a lot. It's so much. Yeah. It's why I didn't go out. I didn't go out on dates. I was terrified of it. Yeah. But I figured it out. And then I kissed a lot of people. Oh, okay. No, no, not too many. Not too many. I fucked a lot of girls, but I try not I'm to kiss them. on the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have fun. We'll be right back afterwards. From our if you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered!
and we're and back. We're back. Well done. Thank you. Um, I just started was sweating say? because I'm sweating so much. I'm well, no, at the idea of like we had to all do it together, I was like, I want to oh. get it right. Oh, but it didn't bother you that you don't remember feeling my schwanz. <laughs> I don't know if that happened. <laughs> oh, okay. it's sad. You're not that memorable. Well, I don't want to be make everybody uncomfortable, but you, know you couldn't maybe, believe it. Maybe um, your friendship overshadowed yes. the origin. Well, we've been friends for so long. Well, that that's was like the thing. two seconds. Yeah. Two I days, couldn't tell whatever. you any of my friends how I met them except for maybe two. And the rest of them, I'm like, I don't know. We've just been there friends was a, There that's was a, really a friendship good point. with us that was, that was more like... I remember it as we beca- we connected very quickly and we were, I guess, attracted to each other enough, at least, maybe mm-hmm. a lot, but at least enough to where it's like, I really like being around this person and sh- I think she's attractive mm-hmm. and we kiss. Mm-hmm. I don't remember it ever being like, there was this big courting phase or we, no. do- oh, it was kind of no. just like, it's but like that's what I mean. That instant it went- rapport sometimes feels romantic and then you realize, oh, this is a friend. This yeah. Is a, you know, it has instant rapport, you kind of can misread it sometimes. You're like, this is more Maybe. than it is, but it's sometimes. I, remember, I told Betty the other day that I don't remember like a falling out or a why did, or why we didn't I mean there was a oh, while we didn't no. talk for a little bit the same as other people but th- that was after not, the fact yeah not because Can of I that ask you a question though yeah because you had been on a date with him then when you dig it how long after that did you go out with it's him? probably a while a while this right. is a long time ago when you, you dated other okay? people did you not feel okay talking to him or were you like whatever because of we had gone on dates yeah like, never I that's never, what I mean yeah, it was a like, literal immediate the same, yeah. yeah there was because usually I would have like residual something. Yeah. And like I feel inappropriate dis- or something. It would yeah. be displaced or I would be projecting or I would. Also, you know. we never slept together. I think that's big. That's helpful. Yeah. So there's just none of that. There was just it was a very natural, organic. It just moved through it very quickly into like a wonderful, you know. Right. Yeah. But also. Yeah. I mean, I, I there are definitely people I dated where that didn't happen. Obviously. Where you would like if Stephen you know. were at dinner with you, you wouldn't be like, hi to them. Always yeah, I mean, I try to have relatively good feelings with people from the past because right. they know you at like a certain part in your life. But um, and Steve's just so he's like too too joke. cool. Like right. I'll be like, we'll be somewhere. This is now it's been so long, but you know, in the beginning I'll be like, just so you know, that person over there I dated, and they'll be like, okay. I'm like, just wanted you to know so you don't find out like he's when they like come that. over. And he's like, he okay. goes like once in 2006, I sent her a message. I don't know if it was flirting, <laughs> but it could have been flirting. But it was definitely asking her if you want to go to a film. And I'm like, Rick. And he's I, like, I, but I've never spoken to her since. And if I have, I don't know. Remember, maybe I responded with an emoji to a story in 2011. And I'm like, oh my god. I have this fear. I don't yeah, like. I don't sweet. lie. Yeah. And I have this fear of like somebody f- feeling like they found something out yeah. as opposed to now they know. Like, know anything. Mm-hmm. I if I don't want you to feel like I'm. I was keeping something from you. So I overcompensate, I but think, with that. But it's safe. Doesn't that make you feel safe? Yeah. Like, you know, he'll tell you everything. Yeah, there's absolutely. something really... Like, I do it just out of, like, respect. And, like, I don't ever... I mean, it's not like... I don't have anything to hide. But it's like, I always want transparency and, like, comfort. And I want... No I surprises. Want, yeah. I want him to feel like he always, no matter what, knows he's the most important thing. My number one. There's nothing he doesn't know. Right. And I, I mean... Will you get him uh, on the phone now and tell him that you don't remember, <laughs> but you touched my phone? I, I told him... I was doing your podcast and I said... Oh, there must be a, like, I should talk about the Passover thing. It's so weird and funny. Um, and he said, yeah, great. But then I was saying, I want to make sure, I asked Betty to make sure that you feel okay. What a great date. The Passover thing. Yeah. I know. But I feel like there's a better way we can tell it and a funnier way we can tell it. So we should refine it. Work on it. Well, I think we should refine it first. <laughs> you can animate the whole date. Well, yeah. Let me hear. Do you have it in mind or do you want to tell it again a different time? It was a dark and sweet <laughs> I remember a storyteller. I just want to remember what my grandma said. It was so funny that you. That's really great. You were so kind and like, and also you did it like you, you, you acted like, yeah, I've been around blind grandmas. You were like, Like, no, 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 I get it. You're like, yeah, like there was a, there was something, there was something I think in you that was like, I'm not saying it's fake, but it was, you wanted to let me know. Like stepping up to the plate. I'm cool. I, I could I could I could hang with a blind to- grandma. You need me to do this? I'll do whatever you want to your grandma. And you did it. You were so it was so sweet, and nobody caught on, and it made me laugh. That so is I had sweet. to say, it may, I know Gloria, and I know when she saw you, she would have been like, oh, "It's the most beautiful girl that's ever walked in the door." So you must have just thought she was. Totally I'm telling you, blind. it was all covered. It was me saying she acts like she's not. I know, but you must have been like, "Geez, she's very good at like I looking like me in the eye." And like- I mean, I was also like. 
walking the door to a lot of family members. Like grandma was already so sitting so at the much. table. Grandma was like. <laughs> You said something like, I'm putting, uh, she, there was something, you're like, I'm putting my glass, down. like you, you, it was, you're narrating it your was actions. On the nose. They're like, you're like, there's a napkin to your left, to your left. She's you like, know, I'm going to put this glass of water in front of you. <laughs> like you're speaking to someone who doesn't speak English well. Here's what's happening. So people do to my mom, yeah. yeah. That's really sweet. Anyway, it was clearly it's such a special time for us. <laughs> Wait, and then yeah. you ended up in very much in love and in London. Then I dated a lot after that. And then um, that was a good little period for me because right. I was like super confident. I was working, like everything. I sort of what felt like- What triggered the confidence? Because you weren't confident before or something changed? I think it was evolution of confidence, but I just then and continued to hopefully just grow, get more rooted, get more grounded, right. and more happy, like happier in my own skin, all of that. And I just had like everything about it. I sort of, I was just in such a good place. And I met Stephen from that place, thankfully. Right which I think is part of why I made the choice that in a good way, like he, we're, we work so well. Right. You're credited in um, yeah. in uh, Finding With My Family. Oh, with yeah. thanks. With a yeah. thanks. I remember you, you told- You guys did research. Well, you, I love that film. You also told me when, because last time we were here, we brought up for a second, but when I was here last year, my mom came and the three of us went to lunch. Oh, I told you about the movie. Well, I asked you about it because I- love the movie i've seen it Aww. i saw it in the theaters and i think i've seen it three more times since then Aww, it's such perfect. a feel good and it's just like that's it's just it's it's a perfect movie. it's yeah, it's sweet. just it's great it's Aww, great yeah. and i remember we talked about it and you yeah. told me it's like you were reading over in the notes and the yada yas i don't yeah. m- know exactly what you did but a special thanks is uh i uh, help them like we work together a lot like we f- for, do this for each other but read every, like help give notes help yeah. you know watch edit i'm sure you you're, she, yeah, very exactly, much. she helps produce the exactly podcast now. Yeah, yeah oh amazing so say, like it's just when yeah it's a collaborate it's a partnership it's yeah i mean he does i don't want to take away from what he does i just mean i definitely contribute for sure yeah uh, but we work and, and he, he does with me you. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah really i feel so safe because betty betty is a creative director i mean before we met she 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 just has great instincts for stuff mm-hmm. that happens to i want to take advantage of yeah plus she not only knows me and my intentions with things, she happens to like my style enough yeah. to where she then is an uh-huh. eye for me. Um, so do you guys want to continue? Well, you might do a podcast together, you said. Well, not I'm still show, just doing Take show. Your Shoes Off podcast. I just like, like, I like her being, being part of it. I like being in the production side of mm-hmm. stuff. Betty like wants being... to be in production. Yeah. But like... I mean, you could work together in that way. Yeah. yeah we do very that. much want to. It's tough because she's not in the States at the moment. But like I reached out to Bill the other day mm-hmm. for Ted Lasso season three when they start filming. Yeah. Betty wants to anything. She wants to start as a PA even. Yeah. Just any yeah. type of production. I just want to be in the world. I just want to be in production. I've done uh, very much like stills and photography productions. So like what, fashion When you say campaigns. production, what do you mean specifically? That so you're like interested? fashion campaigns. And that's not what I want to do anymore. Mm-hmm. I want to move over into like film or something. But what like what would you love? Like what's your ideal of what you want? Like what's my Production wise. Yeah. Being a producer, like on oh, set literally. producer. Yeah, yeah, oh, on set producer. May, I was considering a line producer, but it is a lot of like financial stuff. Oh, it's which hard. I don't mind. I like budgeting, but um, I feel like an on set producer is like a bit more. She I helps like so much production. with uh-huh. every aspect of this. I mean, from the literal edits to like, you know, you just need a new set of eyes yeah. and you trust, mm-hmm. but also finding guests and reaching out and, and, when I first started this podcast, I was putting in over 40 hours a week editing. Oh my it's just God. three cameras. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I still put in a lot of time, but I was looking for help and it's hard to find. And I, I reached out and then I got so many submissions from people where I got a bit overwhelmed. Betty looked at all of them, figured out who to write back, looked at their reels, figured out what oh. they could do. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to give it up. So like, let's have them do something else. Have them do uh, a best of reel or, or a commercial like I reel. I give them a little tester yeah. and then because see what they came back You with. could watch people's stuff and it's like, the content isn't good, but I right. see your 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 ability to do what we want to take advantage you're of. Good, yeah. So she was able to give something that I could then digest. Oh, this and like not only did she do that, it's not like she did it so I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have. And the initiative to it, and the finding the things, and the setting the stuff up, and it's like, bef- I now get advertisers. But before mm-hmm. that, she was reaching out and getting me ads and just whatever I need. Amazing. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this. And then merch, but it was all stuff I'd done at brands before, yeah. whether yeah. it was like clothing apparel stuff or it was like branding merch and stuff like that there's 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 wanting help delegating the things that i don't want to be doing anymore or want help doing and then there's also like i didn't even realize yeah to do this or to replace with this and it's just and once that happened there's also this control like i still have a hard time i have 
I have great people that help edit now and we have a shorthand and they add their own thing, blah, blah, blah. It's it's coming together. It's fantastic. But like having somebody that I could say, I don't know. And Just Betty, a partner. To say, do this. Yeah. Rick, stop, stop focusing on this. And I then... Uh, for whatever reason, decided I'll listen to that. Mm-hmm. But do you, it makes it do so you write? Easy. Yeah. Will you show him your writing? Oh God, yeah. And he'll just go through it. And is well, there any like butt hurtness when you're like? No, we have a really. Um, we, we just have a good shorthand with each other, like the way we speak to each other. So if we, um, because there's a foundation of like love and trust, I know right. like how highly he thinks of me. Then anything he's saying, it's respectful. There's kind. There, there's not right. coddling. You needed. don't feel like you're being like kind of battling with someone never and we like i do the same for him like he but we both make sure we like i think it's just intuitive like you start with a positive and then go to the (gasps) um but tell me (laughs) this is so unprofessional but tell me when you um when you go just say you get sent a script you're like umming and ahhing about a role i don't know how it is with people with roles if they just are like yes or no straight away does he go through it with you and like um I mean, an offer, yeah, we would, with both things, like every, mostly what we do is like, we do project by project that we talk about together to figure out where we're going to be. So it's like, right now he's working in the UK. Oh, so it's like scheduling almost. What is he working on now? Right. He created a show um, and it's on BBC and Amazon. They just changed the title. I think it's now called Outlaws. Um, It was The Offenders. I think now it's The Outlaws and it starts airing in October, but they're, they've been doing it for the last year here. Um, but is so he directing? He's writing, directing, acting, all of it. Amazing. He's I don't know how he's so he's so amazing. Um, but so everything will be like uh, it's it, everything's decided together because you have so to, nice. you know. It's yeah, so sweet. You're it's basically like, like I don't want to do this because I'm going to be away for a year. It might be location. It might be so like it might be a creative conversation. It might be lo- just logistics. It might be how do we do this? How long will you spend away from each other before you guys well, like that's enough? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I don't like to go more than three weeks. Right. Sort of. That's sort of where maybe a teeny bit grumpy and like, mm-hmm. or, or I just try to, but we don't, I mean, we'll spend longer stretches and then not, we just go based on sort of where we're at, how we right. feel. Have you, like do you feel that you have given anything up by um, one, just being in a relationship with somebody else that's not in your home country, mm-hmm. but two, with somebody who is in the same field as you to where there is just going to be a give and take. Yeah. Do, have you felt there's anything, well, not that you resent or would do differently, but yeah. do you feel that if you were single, that things would have been different? Absolutely. Uh, could you give a, a, an example of that? So I, before I met him, work had always come first, without a doubt, no matter what. And before everything, and I worked my ass off and I've hustled my whole life and I'm very, very proud to be where I am. To, the point, I am where, <laughs> to the point where like relationships would suffer? Always. Right. Like it never occurred to me that that should be in any way a priority. Right. And that has completely changed. Right. So Steven is first, will always be no matter what. His needs, his wants, his comfort. Like What do you mean first? And not in a code Above, but ahead of yours? She's a, his no, priority. no, ahead of, will be priority, priority over like, work, like his, not, I don't mean his over mine, no, but I feel like um, his well-being and how something might affect him. But does that mean that Steve's work comes ahead of your work? No, not necessarily. I just mean as far as like, if so there's a job. also give her that space. I yeah. assume he knows the industry, yeah. So it, you're not. Well, arguing. there's sometimes when like, He's a show creator, yeah. Right, so he's busier and more successful. He's, he's, is the bottom line. Well, he's busy, but but just by by job description, even if you were making more money, as not that you don't write, but most of your experience comes, you you show up to set on the days you work right. and yeah. you leave. Where his are, he's there every day. So and just beforehand and all. So just by yeah. design, he, he he is spending more time on on yeah. the work than you. Yeah. So you needing to be there, you needing to help. Is there something? I guess what I let me qualify because I feel like what I said seems codependent. I just mean that like. I, if, if with work stuff, as much as I value it and I'm grateful for it, um, I would never do it if it in any way compromised put, what was needed yes. for our relationship. Right. What you said that. it used to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's why, mo- it's why my relationships didn't work. If I may ask, um, like if you were giving advice to somebody, yeah. right. Um, and where you are, is it fair to say is where you want to be? The in, give in and like, take. Yeah. And, oh, in a relationship. Yes. In the, right. So, which might be for somebody else, might not be for somebody else, depending yeah. where they are. But knowing just what you know, if you were giving advice to somebody else in a similar position, cha- leaving the country and or getting into a relationship with somebody who is busier than you, mm-hmm. um, what is that give and take? Like, 
turning down a job is probably mm -hmm. difficult. And I had to this year. Part of it was COVID because if we're in different countries, that was I was really scared. I didn't want to be separated or have borders closed. Right, um, right. And it was not supposed to be. It was supposed to be. He was work, like the plan. Like of course, all of our plans changed, yeah. but um, it was way different. I was going to be here for a few weeks. That's now been a long time. Um, I can still go work. All of that stuff. I can. So it's not like oh, I gave up my life and I follow him around. Um, both of our work works well for where we're at and how our lives are. We just have to. Um, it's just a lot of it's communication. To be considered. Yeah, that's but if considered. Steve wasn't working, yeah, we, you would have been able to do that job, and he would have come with you. Correct. But I went back to school this year. For what? The last I took a I went to Cambridge for the year. What did you study? Writing. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. So I. So what happened? So I during was, COVID. Yeah. So online. I could, I'm sorry. You're telling me. Yeah. I'm cutting you off. Sorry. So um. So th so that is to say, like, I can't. I, I love working. I love how it feels. I love being productive. And so I was trying to find a way around be being able to do both. Right. Um, and so for me, what worked well, so I found this program, I applied, I got in, and it was my way of be having a creative outlet. Um, I felt super fulfilled. He was able to work. And then had the right job come up in that time, I would have taken it. Right. Like if it was the right thing. And what was um, the job? Did you audition for it? Which what was? The one that you couldn't do. Down. No. It was an offer. It was an offer, but I have auditioned and have... not gotten things. Was it a was it a lead on a show or was it a guest star type of thing that um, you didn't care that much about? It was a lead, but I don't know how mu how much legs it really had. Did probably. it go? Uh, no. That must no. have felt good. Basically, I think. <laughs> right? See, I think all that Stephen has changed for you is that you kind of listen to your intuition with stuff. You didn't love it enough to actually do it. Probably when you were younger, you would just do it to be busy. You know what? You're you're so you're so right. insightful there what has happened is i now have <laughs> um a sense of safety and stability and right. i'm slowing down and making decisions from that place as opposed to staying on this hamster wheel and just growing, momentum growing big, big yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. and so it's more about what i want and what feels good and i don't have yeah. to you know and, all. and i know that's a insane luxury well i think maybe when you were single you would have just you may would have maybe done more but it wouldn't have been like quality kind of stuff you were just well, done I only could only rely on myself like I wasn't in a relationship that that I had given myself to and therefore right. it didn't feel like a unit it felt like I have I'm the only one who has my back I have to work I have to keep going and right. I still I'm never not going to be ambitious I'm never not going to have drive I love working I'm a workaholic I can't help it but um but I've slowed down I've stopped I reflect I think a little more and so now my my program just ended I got a A it's not a big deal hey. um do you have an image of the A's that we could put up um, I well they so so boring so Cambridge you your teachers get graded on their grade to you and then yeah, it goes yeah. to another official place so they're in the process of that before they give you the official you passed it, so they make sure that the teacher wasn't just giving everyone A's which Cambridge is a is cool I which is a it. big bummer my mom did a um, environmental thing there like an environmental studies thing there online or in person uh, online yeah they it I don't know I'm so loud COVID is the first time ever at least this program has been. Was that too loud? That's okay. Um, was that fake? Yeah, I was gonna. Got. It. I'm here. I'm, I get it. But um. <laughs> someone just this gets shit on your. Oh, you getting shit on? <laughs> the microphone <laughs> farted in my. The <laughs> microphone farted in my face. Market blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they because of COVID, it's usually in person, and yeah. it went online, which was incredible. So it was an opportunity to have the same, all the same um, tutors. But you could be anywhere, which was so there are people from those writing programs are tough, though. Is it not quite it was harder than I yeah, thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I know people who've gone to Cambridge and they're like, do not join the writing department, like, don't get involved in anything to do with like English like writing. Goes, also, I like wasn't, I don't know, I just hadn't been to school in a really long time, so um, Different it set. was legitimate. <laughs> yeah, you do go back to being a child again, and for, studying. speaking of being a child again, could you help me? Fig pitch a joke on how because the microphone shit on you a little bit but it was in was another no far dead yes poop would have gone down yeah well it was 10 or 15 seconds later before you said uh, a tutor where i would have wanted to, like it was a tutor that like oh that's such, he's such a tutor he farts all the time could you pitch some way that i could set up when you get farted on by the by the microphone where the word tutor then does it oh is that a fart sound no i was thinking Oh, <laughs> we could do a little fart. That wasn't one. We'll put in a huge one. You have so to like, do a fart. Wait, you have to literally sound. learn how to. to we have a lot of tutors on this show. <laughs> yes, you got it. Edit that back it. there. You did it. I don't Edit know. that in. Go on. 
<laughs> right. Very, very tough. Cambridge English, Cambridge writing. Um, well, for me, maybe, probably not for someone else, but for me, I think like it was it was for grades. So it was assignments and homework yeah. and, you know, required reading and, um, you know, school. What kind of writing? It has to, it's that thing where it has to be in by midnight and you're there at like 11.45. And like and rules, <laughs> like it. we like graded on grammar mm-hmm. and like. Yeah. What else are you graded I'm on? I'm terrible at grammar. In writing. Sentence structure and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but grammar, grammar is grammar. Grammar like, I feel like is bullshit, but it actually is really important. Grammar is very important. I mean, the difference between a comma or not is, is yeah. this person mad at me? Is it, you know? I know. I'm not good at it. Is but not this just person that, but mad like, at me? Where you put, oh, it's so, but that was. But it's not It's not writing script writing, right? No. So Yeah. So the last semester was. Last semester I wrote a pilot. The, fir- the middle was um, two chapters of a novel and then the first. Term, they call it term by say semester. Yeah, it's a semester if there's three, right? What do you yeah. prefer, novels or script? Um, you know what I love is short stories. Mm. I loved it. I love reading <gasps> short stories Me more too. than I love reading novels. And Me stuff too. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. I find scripts quite hard to read. Very hard. That just might be the more you read the the easier. I've yeah, read a I think it is amount. a language. It's whereas hard. I read them now and I'm like, I don't really. I, I think I see them all. My brain is quite referency, mm. so I see them all as something else. Like I'm like, I'll just pick the thing that I can find closest to it, and so every character kind of feels the same as something from another thing. Like everything is a reference point for me. So I'm but like, maybe oh, if like, you're developing it, you might have yeah. a different relationship to it. Yeah, maybe. I guess if it's coming, but it's not hard. Stuff. I feel like if you do more, you know, my okay, it, so. my agents will send me stuff. Um, I'm not the, I don't work every day. Mm-hmm. So my agents will say like, Hey, read for your interest. And I'm like, I'm, in, I'm interested. Just get me the fucking audition. And if, <laughs> and, and if I'm, if I'm going to producers, I'll read the thing. But are you on your show now? Or are you committed? Yes. Till when? Listen, I auditioned for this thing in April, 2019. Oh God. And it comes out now, I think January 2050. of 2022, <laughs> oh which means almost three years. I've, yeah, and wow. I was developing with Bill and another producer friend of mine, uh, shout out to John Cern, where we were going out. Incidentally, I was diagnosed with autism mm-hmm. in my 30s. Mm-hmm. And I have this show. I play every Tuesday night. I am phenomenal. I play every Friday night. I am phenomenal. I play every Saturday afternoon. I am phenomenal. And then other times too. I am phenomenal. I got big balls. I got a cool guy haircut. I got... Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Watch this. <laughs> Here it goes. Here's the truth. I don't know. Check the ball. Let's go. Pass it in. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back, give it back, give it back. You ain't passed the ball enough, eat my butt. You ain't checked the ball out, eat my butt. You shoot from too far, eat my butt. But you make it every time, no shit, slut, I'm the fucking man. Ball is life, ball is my wife. How I hesitate with no pain, with no strife. Just give me the rock, it's my therapy. Give me the hezzy, then I'll pop a three. Bitch, I'm the man, motherfucker. I win trophies, you a stand ass sucker. I got a big ass dick. I grab titties and I fuck bitches clips. That I was com- and we were going out. We already had we developed it. We had we had uh the first pitch on the books was a week and a half after my test. And when I got it, we had to scrap it all. Oh. So I couldn't because not only am I exclusive on this show, it was just another show about autism. I can't Oh. Uh so so now I'm like But you can still develop even if you're exclusive as an actor. I can't be an actor on it. Right. The show is me. I mean, it's right. me. I've okay, turned. Okay. I've since turned it into. I have a draft of a script, and I we yeah. were just talking about it the other day. Yeah. I, I kind of left it alone for a bit. And blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, but uh, wait, what were we just talking about? Um, Reading scripts is quite hard. So, but I still want to do stuff. Guest stars or movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly movies now is what I'm able to do. So, but they send me these things, and they're like, they "Wait, send, but what's your schedule? Are you not obviously not shooting now, and then you're going to be again, or what?" Well, we we we. F- we filmed from March through May of this year. Oh, I, and now you wait. Now I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my Cambridge is the podcast. Like yeah, I needed yeah. something to yeah. be doing, right? But they'll send me tons. And for a while, I would be reading them all. Mm-hmm. I'd read them all. And it would be like, sure, I'll, I'll audition for... I'll get fucked in the ass. I don't care. Just get, let me work. You like working. Not, not yeah. that there's anything wrong with getting mm-hmm. fucked in the ass. I'm just saying it's not something I have much experience with. But... Yet. Correct. Get me the audition, guys <laughs> and girls. But but that I have to read these I have to read these script and I just that I, I, and I, it's just too it, it takes it takes me three days to read it because I have to take mm. breaks constantly and reread yeah so then I just told my agents I, I said I'm gonna read the first act and then I'll control F to read whatever my dialogue is anyway long 
thing of saying, I don't want to keep reading and re maybe that's mm. good for you for a person. It's just, it's so hard. Well, I think, I don't know. I mean, they say, you know, reading helps writing, whether it's script or books or whatever. Sure. Um, so in that way, if you're also writing, I think it can be really helpful. I've read a lot of scripts. That's how I feel though. Like when I got to that yeah. term in class, I was like, <sighs> but it was, I learned, it was great. Yeah. It was great. And I did like, I, my whole thing was I want to approach it um, wide eyed. I just want to learn yeah. and be open. Yeah, you're inspired. Yeah. Coming over as they're like, just get me in a, like it wasn't inspired. Are you doing yeah. anything with what you wrote in the course? It, it just finished. I think the pilot I wrote needs like one or two more passes for right. sure. Um, well, are and you then working maybe. on at the moment? Are you filming here or no? No, I'm not. No, I just had finished right. the class. And so that is now, it was literally just ended. And do you want so, to do background work with me on something of Stevens? Oh my God, it's so funny. The I two love of you just walking like a couple on through, a lot of my friends through a stuff. supermarket. I love it. I have a little, You know, it's uh, real. with COVID being, yeah. being back, it's like so, you, you got to get tested yeah, and yeah. like, um, so my answer is no. But um, uh, you could, I'm sure if you wanted to. Rick is the least inconspicuous background person ever. I've gotten good at it. <laughs> He's like, we'll put up some Always Sunny in Philadelphia clips. Some of my best acting is subtle acting. I was in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. What I do is put myself in a moment and live it. I'm not an actor. I am living in fiction. You're clapping and making noise yeah. instead of. <laughs> I'm just always cheering, cheersing in the background. <laughs> you ever notice that? <laughs> at, you know? any, at any restaurant, there people. Are, and they're both talking at the same time, so they couldn't be listening. I'm actually good at it. I just happen to think big is better. <laughs> what did you do on 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 um, uh, fighting with my family? To warrant a thanks. Sure, but also like even if he didn't give you the thanks, like what was the process? You, you read it from from script. Well, the, um, did you show up on set? The better example because that had started before we met. He had been working on that a long time. Probably the show now is a better example, and it's from start to finish like reading notes i mean i get essentially like script editing but i do like are you he, credited on it are you not a producer then well n i don't there's there are already those people but it's oh. just as his partner it's just um i right. sort of do like a uh i don't know i guess I, i'd call it it's a, like an emotional pass so he's literally he's the smartest person i've ever met the mm -hmm. best writer i've ever met he's amazing but but like anything there's drafts so um, I just let him know when I feel like it hiccups. Right. That's it. So it's just sort of, but it can be super helpful. So it's sort of like- Especially whether, if you're an actor. Yeah, like here's where this character hiccups. Yeah. Here's where this beat, here's where I don't believe this. Right. That kind of thing. When, um, uh, how does he handle when he disagrees with your note? Um, Neither of us have egos about it. Right. So he's very good at knowing what feels right and needs to stay. And he's very good about being open when he thinks it might need to change. Yeah. I don't have an ego with it that I don't think. And mm -hmm. I think that that could make me, I've had to learn to communicate to people who do need to hear it a certain way. Mm. When, well, probably friends. Or for me, it's friends. If I oh, read what? something of a friend, I have to be very careful. Yeah. I The way I, Steve and I speak to each other is so concise and specific. Even like if he's right. helping with an audition. The point. Yeah. It's like, on that line, oh, try this. I don't know. Like, I'll don't try that. that. Yeah. But if it's a friend, it's sort of like, that was amazing. But actually, I wonder if, and you know what? It's the same with school. And we had to have a whole freaking class about the feedback. Thing, how yeah. you do feedback. And people had to, was that a fart sound? No, I was thinking. Oh. <laughs> we could do a little fart. That wasn't one. We'll put in a huge one. You have to like, fart? Wait, you a have big to diarrhea literally sound. learn how to. You have to we had a lot of tutors on this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it. Edit we that back it. there. You did it. Um, yeah, you had, like, there's an art to. to to back. criticizing people. I, I had, um, do you know who Blake Griffin is? Um, basketball. Yeah. He, um, he was on this podcast, but before this podcast, a few years ago, um, he came over to my house and uh, we, tr that's a long story, doesn't matter. The point is, uh, we had this conversation that was, that, uh, that was for you. Oh. I got that for you. Um, we had a conversation, it wasn't on our, this show, about, so interesting that, the NBA gives that like after show, it's like well you know really there was a team thing and blah 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 blah. There are oh, classes chat afterwards. That after so like odd. after a game when they come yeah. interview, all NBA players are coached and have teachers wow, for how yeah. you're supposed to because some people are more charismatic than others, but everyone needs to know to be able to say, well you know it's a it's really a team game, whatever the thing might right. be. What you 
I wonder if, like that's a, like in class, it's a lot of like, I wonder if. Or is right, it the, uh, give, of the, I don't believe this person. I wonder if they. Like give two positives and then one negative. Yeah. yeah. I can breathe that miles away. I'm like waiting for the negative. You're like, you know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I pitched something. So on, on this, this, uh, Amazon show that I'm on the show creator is is Jason Kadams mm-hmm. he Parenthood Friday Night Lights um, I'm a fan of both of those shows mm-hmm. so now he's my boss but also everything's a collaboration right mm-hmm. I mean you want to at least feel safe to suggest and ask mm-hmm. and I'm I, there was a scene that was happening and and I didn't even think about how to present it and we're in front of everybody and Jason's there and I said it'd be awesome if we which wasn't even about my characters about mm-hmm. this scene maybe I shouldn't have maybe it doesn't matter but Jason goes, takes a beat to consider it and he goes, yeah, we'll think about that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think I, well, I said, but, oh, <laughs> you know, but like, mm-hmm. just say no, yeah, just yeah, say yeah. no. And, then, and I, and I shadow, cause I wanted to direct. So I've shadowed oh, every, every show I've been on or my friends that do stuff, I'm shadowing constantly. And what I'm, what I've learned is that all directors, this is hyperbole, but also, no, it's not. Every director knows that every actor is insecure mm-hmm. right. and they will approach them not with data, but with safety, which cannibalizes the information. I I now know that because I've seen it, but I wouldn't have been able Maybe to read through American it. Maybe that's American directors. What's Steven like with his people? No, I th- well, I think you have to, you have to make sure. I don't want to speak it's for kid him. kid gloves, basically. That makes someone yeah. feel safe. But just, I'm, I'm here. We're here. We're tra- the safety Hi. is making the best thing. Tell me what it is. I know, but that's because you operate from a different yeah, place. Yeah, you deal with stuff like that well where someone would be shaking. But the director also wants to say it that way. It makes his job easier. Yes, but he doesn't know if he's saying it to someone who can receive it. You know, like yeah. if, I do know. if you shake someone on set and suddenly they cannot do their lines because they're so like, fuck. Tell me what you up. think of this. I've thought about if I ever get to the point where I'm directing a production and people... When? Uh, if when if I ever get to the place where I'm doing this, <laughs> I would want to do what I do now with directors. We wait before we had four directors on our show at Black episodes, mm-hmm. and I would tell them beforehand. I sometimes can't read between the lines. If there's ever, even if you want to give me a line read, anything you just gotta like tell me directly. I would want to find a way of like, hello everybody, my name's Rick, and I put an Instagram handle up here. Here's what I am this way. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to let you know that you know. At the end of every week, I'll give you a whatever I have to figure out that I think language. That's helpful. It's like a relationship. Yeah, I think that's helpful. But I, I think if you're, I think it's great you're that as an actor. I'm the same. It's like sort of here. Here's how I work. Here's how you'll get my best work. Here's yeah. what I like. Here's, so, my, here's manual, my manual. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's hugely helpful. It's I think it's part of the reason why I most people I've worked for it's been repeat like it just it's right. it, it's a good working relationship yeah. when when you're just because they feel safe with you they can say and get they can get whatever they need because I've been clear about how they can get it right. essentially right. I think maybe when you're the director you're you're now the boss so it's you have to work with the talent that you have in the way they like to work maybe also along with them working with who you are like you you have to be a little flexible if you have you know what it's like working out some people want to be like Ah, oh, you're a piece of shit. Do more sit-ups. Fuck yeah. you. You're lazy fucking yeah. asshole. That's yeah. a pretty big example, but I know what you mean. You know what I mean? And some people, like I like, that was some really good skipping. <laughs> really good try. skipping. Oh, for working out. Yeah. And like, you did really good. And if you want to sit up, like I, like I do better with that kind of than like the more aggressive, you know, or whatever. But I think you need to know what the people working for you with you need. Yeah. And provide See, I that. I would need a private conversation. I just don't like any feedback, good or bad negative in front of anyone like even yeah. if it's positive oh. please don't say it in front of people because it makes me so like ashamed and embarrassed and but I'm that's like, amazing to say and to, to want to know yeah. about yourself and then to say yeah like when i would work out anyone who's above me i'd always be like let's always do like a check-in just a private check-in like mm. once a week yeah a we one-on-one on conversation one because i don't better. like being mm. praised and i don't like being like cajoled but what happens if what happens if we're doing another take but the, but the choreography wasn't what I, we needed and i would say betty that was perfect. It's, we have. Could we do that again? You know, like I, I, it's. Yeah, I would prefer that. That was really good. Let's do exactly the same again. Like I'd prefer the data than the praise. The praise made me feel uncomfortable because I'd be like, "Shit, that's so perfect. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it again." Mm. Like saying something was perfect would then freak me. out. I know there's so human like, emotion what? involved. I but also sometimes... don't feel like I'm a robot, but yeah, some, it's just like. Also, you don't have time. Like the yeah. sun's going down. Yeah, yeah. Hit true. your mark. Shut the fuck up. Hit the energy, the energy of calculating yeah. how to do this. Let me just like, hey, I, you got to shut up for a second. Or yeah. hey, please be quiet Isn't for a second. David we need Wayne to. Wayne like that though. He feels like that. Yes. Yeah, and he's. 
I love. Do you know David Wayne? No. Oh, I love David Wayne. Uh, role models, the Wet state, Hot American, Wet Hot American Summer. Summer. Oh yeah. He, he's very deconstructive. Mm. You know, making fun of format. Very dry. Is he serious very or is he not? Very similar to Rick mm. with his behavior. Sometimes I'm like, ooh. You know, <laughs> I, 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 on my on my bulletin board, I've said this in the podcast like five times now, at least. But when I years and years ago, I I had like a it wasn't a vision board, but I had a directors I want to work with, and it was David mm-hmm. Wayne and Edgar Wright. There were two names, Aww. and my first movie was David Wayne. It was amazing, and uh, my first. Have you ex- worked with Edgar yet? Never. Oh. Um, I we follow each other on Twitter, and I asked him, and he's like he responded, but he can't yeah, right now. I have asked him. Oh, he can't. He said no in a way that I believe he would if the stars were aligned, but also maybe he could if he wanted to. You know what I mean? And that's fine. I get it. He's amazing. Um, but David Wayne is very blunt. Like even when I first met him, I was at a barbecue and he was like sitting eating and Rick came over and went, really sincere. I really want you to meet my girlfriend. Do you want to meet her? And he's like, no. And just kept eating. Betty's and I was convinced like, that it's blunt. I'm saying, no, no, that's a joke. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know way, it's a joke, and that's he okay. He didn't break from the joke. He didn't turn around and was like, "I'm kidding. Like, don't worry about but it." So it I, just just like, oh, fuck. I want to tell you a quick story about what he did on set once, and I get it because I am that. And he was on my podcast, and we chatted about has this ever gotten the way to personal life? Um, and for me, it has. We're on set, and his assistant at the time, who knows him way better than me, they've been working together for years, and this is my fourth week on set. I'm shadowing, and I'm just I'm I'm in Video Village. It's just the three of us. And he goes to his assistant. He's very nice. Okay. I'm there. He knows I'm there. He goes, get me my Gatorade. He never asked for a Gatorade. He's joking. She was a little flustered to where it cued me like, wait a minute. He, you know, he's like, you know him better. You know, he's joking, right? She went to get the Gatorade and I commented to David. I noticed this reaction of her. Um, I don't know if you noticed that maybe it's worth acknowledging, but also your joke uh, and he's like yeah obviously but like people don't know that that gene though you guys have exactly like watch his tiktok and you'll just scream rick like no david wayne it's just like rick rick ish stuff or i guess it's david wayne ish after he's older than you (laughs) um but like they have a very similar like yeah they just i understand why he understands him but Mm. i would be at a dinner party and be like i think this guy fucking hates me me. yeah Yeah. i I bring it up because i just like he hates me obviously (laughs) there's two things there's that 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 comedy is great and the tone not the tone of the movie so it's almost like a director being in character like right, keeping yeah. the tone everywhere right but also it's important to recognize that everybody has different languages and that's why when i bring it up i thought is there a way of telling your crew your actors hey everybody i want to learn your language but here's mine mm, i think that has value it it can, i don't think it will ever hurt you to tell someone to inf- to give people information that could help them about your behavior. What have you learned, if anything, from different directors uh, of not, I'm not talking about experience as an acting scripts. Like have you, le- from, I'm talking about communication relationships. It's all communication. Yeah, could, could you tell things that you've learned that you remember? Does that question make sense? I Well, one thing I've learned to do is I'll say, when you said, um, when you said that's blue, did you mean that's blue or did you mean that's red? And like, I'll repeat back to them what they've asked for. And nine times out of 10, what they've asked for is not actually what they want. You want clarification. So you'll repeat it if it seems incorrect or no matter what. If it feels, if something about it like doesn't quite. Like if if they go, could you do that sadder? And then you go, do you mean sadder or like. do you By sad, do you mean. Yeah. And I just get deeper and, and save so many takes by asking. Right. To just get clear because. Just because you're amazing visually and you might be a great sword dealer, it doesn't necessarily mean that one of your skills is communicating. To yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a skill. It's a skill, and it's it's the thing that I'm that I know I, I want. Yeah, it's it's I want that this podcast this I, I I want to continue to understand it. Yeah. But the easiest thing to do is to just say it. It is to you, you know? but you don't but know what the ripple effect. Of blue to you it. might be green to yeah. me. Right. And that's why, here's a perfect example. I want to be able to say, I want to have it blue. Mm-hmm. Um, and trust that if you're not sure what I mean, mm-hmm. or if you are anything, that you would be able to say, hold on, as opposed to me saying, and if you don't understand, you could ask, like... You, you do a really clever thing, though, that I use, and now my mom uses, where if Rick doesn't understand something, he goes... 
I understand what you're saying. Could you say it a different way? Yeah. And then yeah. you suddenly are going, can I say it a different way? Like, obviously, I'm not being clear. And then you have to think, oh, yeah, there is a better way I can yeah. say it. But what I've learned is some people don't feel com- Some people yeah. aren't like you and will just be like, oh, I have to do blue. Yeah. You have to give blue? them a and safe space. Yeah. yeah. And that's me, yeah. N- meeting yeah. you, I won't. N- after meeting you, now I'll say, can you say it another way? And if they say it and it's even more complicated, the way they say it back to me. You're like, oh, happens. great, thanks. Yeah, I'm like, okay, got it. Like, I'm fucking no idea. Now I'm more confused. And I'm like, okay, but I'll just go with it because I think I'm wasting someone's time. Or they think I'm stupid. And I'm like, I guess I'll just uh, do the best with what I've got. I have a new question for you. Hmm. I have dated a couple of actresses. And boy, are my arms Plug tired. Your ears. <laughs> um, and I, after my last relationship i didn't feel like oh i'm never dating an actress again it Mm -hmm. wasn't that i was it was more that like i don't think i want to Mm -hmm. i could give reasons and stereotypes and yada yada that i'm sure you. i was nice to your grandma (laughs) uh i I mean girlfriends you weren't a girlfriend um (laughs) thank thank god God. (laughs) but there's uh, you know i have thought to myself i would date a writer Mm-hmm. You know, not that I'm looking for or not looking for somebody in the industry, but I do think there's pros and cons to all of it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of pros to dating somebody who's creative, which Betty incidentally is just not in the same industry as me. Yeah, yet. Um, yet, correct. I would love her to be. Mm-hmm. But w- could you tell me some pros and cons, if you know of any and feel comfortable with them, of like dating somebody who is in the same field as you? How does it help you creatively? Does it, we kind of touched on, well, you couldn't take a job. But I, well, I think you speak the same language. So he's about to do nights or splits. And it's like, I'm like, oh, man. Like, I, there's an immediate understanding. Could someone who's not in the business over time? Yes, obviously, of course. But there's just like a deep, um, there's a, a built-in respect because we understand what each other's going through and the things that might feel stressful or high pressure that wouldn't seem to be, you know, um, things like that. I think creatively, well, for me, business or not, like we talked about being with someone funny is just game changer brings a little closer someone you respect who's funny that you can play with um do you feel that like this now wanting to write was something you always had and he's kind of unlocked it in you or no no she she's always wanted yeah you've always you you were writing back when we were uh, very intimate (laughs) when we had our deep connection i read all your stuff i remember (laughs) all of you read me all your things (laughs) oh my god was Um, she so it's something you've always wanted oh, to yeah. pursue. Oh, my whole life. Like I love, I've loved writing since I was little. So, and I've loved comedy. Like all the, it wasn't. What a good partner for you to get then. Someone you yeah. literally say. read something yeah. of mine, or at least we talked about it. That thing that I. I gave you notes. Yeah. It was the, great. The You're, thing that was going to become the show that I was out pitching. Yes. Before that, uh, it was this, uh, uh, it was about an adult men's recreational basketball league. Yes. And you read and gave notes that yeah. I liked. Yeah. You're a lot. Trick ball. Whoops, Kobe. You are See ya, baby. one of the best basketball players out there. I'm the best basketball player. But you come out here like you're entering Vietnam. You, you are definitely going. It's a going... contact sport. If, then, then what are we playing this for? What am a... I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed yes. to play? It's a contact sport in the NBA and in college. This is a Jesus. recreational game. When you're on the text chain taunting people like, I'm going to butt fuck you tonight. When you say shit like that. I'm joking. I'm not gonna butt. I've I, I've never butt fucked ever. Have you? Yeah, yeah. It's great. I've done it a lot. You should try it. It's great, but it's besides the point. Again, how do I do it? But that's like we we're talking about the way, especially if it's someone sort of when you're newly or doing it for the first time and sort of figuring out like where the line is, how much you can say, how you say it. But you're very open and you're very good with like just you like things as transparent as possible which makes it easier to give notes do you feel and that getting a special thanks for example that you got but now (laughs) working more and being like you're calling it an emotional pass but it's Mm -hmm. a pass Mm -hmm. and you're doing things is there i almost feel like this is leading and it's gonna be too hard to even know the answer let alone communicate it but you're helping you're producing Mm -hmm. you're is there do you say, hey, Steve, I want to be credited, credited. or money? Um, I hadn't, but we recently talked about if we want to moving forward, work together. Um, like what, because I just went to school, because I'm reevaluating what's interesting to me, I'm trying to figure out moving forward what I want more of, what I want less of, like how I want to grow. And I hadn't, I haven't yet quite been answer, able to answer that. 
it's not about stopping what I was doing. It's just about, conti- I just feel like sort of continuing. Ex- exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so we, we were talking about like in what, in what ways we want to officially work together more. Like, you know, do I want to officially produce, like how, how much I like my role right now. I like being helpful, but still having my own life, my own career. And it's just it's like, like being a an partner. Uncle, an aunt instead of a mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to fully go in, like what does that look like? What does that mean? I take it work so seriously. So I yeah. do everything like. Um, what do you want? Well, th- that I can't answer yet. I don't know. I'm trying to figure She's that out. Other, basically. Yeah. Also, will that well, you have your it by Monday and we could VO it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because will that change your relationship? Will it? Is it based on the boundaries with the relationship or is it truly what you want? No, I'm not worried about our re- our relationship will thrive in mm. whatever. Um, so why would you not want to be doing it if that's what you want to be doing? No, I don't know that I'm as interested in producing. It may cannibalize other things too. I don't know if it's interesting. It's a lot of where it's different. But producers aren't aren't necessarily. Hey, you know, we need to get the the, the wall painted differently. I mean, mm-hmm. like on television, executive producers are just the the writers. On a TV show, right. you, you mean like co-write something together? No, basically producers, and this is something I've been looking into recently. There are a million types of producers. Mm-hmm. And like we even have a conversation with a producer in the Hongo and he was just like, yeah, there are producers that put money forward. There are producers that are just creative mm-hmm. input. There are producers that are like... You're helping him producers. with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a mm-hmm. little bit of this. He's saying what would change basically if it were an official role? Um, I would do more. And are you not doing more now because you don't want to? Because Or there's no I'm space also for do- it? There's no space. Yeah, I'm, so also, in school. I'm also still auditioning. I'm also technically still working. Right. You know, I still have a full So because it's not a job, you can go, I've got an audition now. I can't help you with that. Exactly. Yeah. Is yeah. auditioning work. that time consuming? I mean, yeah. how many auditions do you I do? Like I don't audition. I mean, I have an I audition, a a three auditions a month. Oh. Are you auditioning a ton? I feel like there's always something. I feel, I feel like it's constant or it's a... Yeah, or uh, in LA. but Or on Zoom for LA or... Yeah, I feel like there's always something or there's mm. a thing that might be or there's a, you know, I don't know, read this book to see. I don't know. I feel like there's always something, which is... I say that like it's bad. It's great. There's always... There's always something. Mm-hmm. Oh, in a good way. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, like there's just there's always something, definitely, um, for sure. Who's so your I think agent? Um, Gersh in LA. Do you have an agent out here? I don't yet. Partly, you want one? I just don't know how I want to move forward. So yeah, I don't. I haven't been as. What do you mean? Wouldn't it be awesome to act here? In a manager? Yeah, and I think I I'm starting to be ready for that. I've have, like. I've really been hibernating and it's been so good. I'm only slowly coming out of it. Because like, of COVID or because of something else? You just, London felt very, like everything. You have friends I just, here and stuff. I've made some really, really good free. friends. Yeah. Right. So I just slowly am sort of getting back to. Are to they in the, the entertainment business as None. well? None. Yeah. Tell me the truth. None. Are, no, 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 oh. no. I don't think. You, be honest, aren't they in the she industry? None. Uh, <laughs> yes, they are. But it's books. It's books. <laughs> yeah. Not the are, same. Are. are, are <laughs> Are some of them, or maybe not your friends, but the people that like you thought you would be friends with and it fizzled, are they boring? Here's the thing. One of uh, this amazing woman I met is an oil painter. So super creative, just different right. and very funny. Um, one's a chef. Um, they all have great senses of humor. Um, one is like a man, like a consultant for leadership and she's hilarious, you know, like helping. What is a consultant for leadership? Like helping CEOs, you know, figure out like the maybe the staff isn't quite you know getting along or somebody right. came in yeah, or they're revamping like a bar yeah. rescue for business yeah it's like kind of an yeah, HR yeah role but it's like a bit different they're really popular now those jobs i yeah. feel like i could do that they're not to expert. take away from her job i just mean like i feel like that'd be fun yeah it's well i gotta surprise you people <laughs> <If> relationships <laughs> yeah oh you <laughs> can do it of- <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very much people's relationships and understanding like a little bit of psychology around like how people think and work yeah it's i want to get uh representation out here and mm-hmm. or meet casting directors out here i recently talked to my agents about that well this is gonna be way too boring for the podcast but we should talk later because there's issues with sag and no unions. Do it on, yeah it's interesting what issues it's so boring well no because the if the we might by the way we'll decide and post but patreon. if you either you can hear it now or <laughs> head on over to patreon.com slash take your shoes off to hear the issues with sag in the UK, <laughs> or we're going to continue. Go to patreon.com slash take your shoes off. 
that was crazy. Well worth the five to ten dollars in case so to listen accurate. to it. Yeah. Yes, we Every definitely don't have to check anything was, that you said. Let me back up and say, of course it's possible. I just mean there are, is some red tape you should be aware of that I'm figuring out. I had wondered why, firstly, because Rick was the first person to tell me they pay you much less here. Yes, on like TV shows and stuff. And then all his friends were like, yes, the pay is terrible. Yes, they don't respect the arts in the UK. But also that makes more sense now that I'm like, okay, the only people I've ever seen that American people on like British TV shows are like. Cuckoo with um, Andy Samberg. And then David Schremer was in something recently. Yeah, but it's so different. If you're the leader, you're the reason they have financing. Right. Then, of course. And right. it can switch. Like, we, like I was an American on a show here, but I was getting paid SAG. And if someone hired from the UK was getting paid Oh, UK that's what rates. you're saying. They have to be, not permission. They just have to pay the union rates. Yeah, it's yes. Just, it's just yeah, but the SAG them. minimum, you're telling me that, that UK people don't even get what SAG minimum would be? No. no. A thousand dollars a day. Our health care oh, is that's... free. Oh. <laughs> what? Our health care is free. Right. But it's worth. I mean, it's. It's. I'm just starting to go down this road because I always just thought I'll just work from LA and go back, and that was always my intention. And then now that I'm here so much, it's right. got to be hard. I'm trying to figure. Out, I'm like, I probably should. It makes sense. And just starting to like dip my toe in that water. And what does that look like? And what are you I meeting do? with agents and stuff? Or you have not yet. Right now? Not yet. Because then I have to work. <laughs> yeah, just like, me, give, there, me, give me one. Is there something? It's been so a lady's intermission. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where um, I assume people work for two reasons, not in this order. To make a living and to be fulfilled creatively. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other things in, on the spectrum. Um, but the fulfilled creatively ebbs and flows because a lot of times we want to break or something can fulfill us for a long period of time. Well, somebody else fulfills you more. But when you're a... You've you've made enough money for yourself, mm -hmm. and or B, you like to list things in letters, and C, you're with somebody who's making money. You have joint income, and or enough money for from you from him. Is there something that disincentivizes? Just you know, like I don't. If I I could work in a year. Mm -hmm. Because I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But then also, well, it's harder to work in a year if you haven't worked for the previous year. Mm -hmm. Is that a battle that you have that you're conscious of? No, I think I um I think I'm just now answering all these things. Like I think it's very easy. I could come on here and be like, I'm not sure what the next thing is, can't wait. Like it I could just avoid all these questions easily and sort of but I feel like I'm in a place of just truly reflecting and figuring listen, I will take the right thing tomorrow anywhere in the world. But it's just my priorities have shifted. Yeah, and I don't my, think you lose ambition just because you feel yeah, more I love stable. Working. Well, it's not about losing ambition. Gonna... It's just that it's, you have to like, we always want to look good. Yeah. But so, but if you stop working out for four months and you lose a little, it's harder to get back in the gym, you know? Yeah. But, but she's always doing something because even at home when she's not working, they're working together. I don't feel like you're getting any downtime even when you think you are. Yeah, it hasn't been downtime. It's been yeah. a different kind of, cre a different creatively, different. I mean, we're, how I quantify work by a paycheck but like it can be you know you're writing a script even if you did, aren't selling it you're, it's I've, work I, i'd like to give one I example to, to i want to do one question that you can also cut because maybe it's inappropriate but this is something i'm thinking about a lot as someone mm. who's ambitious and likes working do you want kids i don't think so right because i have i kind of battle with that because i'm like when is the right time like i don't feel like i have enough momentum or now i'm doing this career change where i just want to do film production and like but I you're can't. so young. I think you'll know. I really believe with that stuff you know. But I really you, do. I feel like it's different than my friends who aren't ambitious. They're mm -hmm. kind of just like, I could do it at any time. Or people who are like financially But you, I promise you, you figure it out. Right. I have my friends that are like insanely great at what they do and super successful. You figure it out. They just make it work. You figure basically. it out. You, right. yeah, you do what you need to do. You get the help you need Did to you do. Did you have that feel when you were younger though? Because I feel like I'm like, oh, I don't want to take it. With kids? Off. Yeah, because if I, you take a year do off. Do you think then, you don't want kids or you know you don't want kids? I, I. You're pretty sure. I don't ever say, I, I never have quite, I've never been the person that like dreamed about it. I mean, right. it's something that, that I'm open to, but I don't, it's not something that If I, it didn't happen, you wouldn't be like, oh, be I'm fine. so upset. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. But I think it's a real thing and, and how it fits in, but you figure it out. Right. And you have, you know, like. Well, I feel like it's so, like, when the more and more I talk to my friends, I used to think like pregnancy was one thing and like having a baby was one thing. And now I'm realizing like. It's so much fucking hard. Like giving birth is so hard. Like your body afterwards, the way you feel. Yeah, I don't know if you heard me earlier. I'm so tired. Yeah, you're so tired. I'm blind. Like it's no, it's tiring sure. though. All my friends who I talk to and I'm just like getting actual details about stuff. And I'm like, everything hurts. Like his friend Allison, who had a baby with John John DeWalt and Allison, they're right. Oh yeah. You're old. They lived in yeah. your building. Yeah. 
so nice. But she had a baby and I was like, please tell me honestly like what it's like. And she goes, like a week after the pregnancy, I was crying in the shower because I was looking down. My nipples were just spraying milk. My vagina was just bleeding. Like my nose was right. She's like, every R. We ask her if that's okay to say because in the business, she tells people that her nipples are always oh. normal and she doesn't. And she just said she realized like this is. We'll ask. Hey, Rick. Yeah, you can use that. No, no big deal. Nipples are natural. So. Allison, you said my penis wasn't getting smaller, but are you sure? Um, no, it's not. It's not getting smaller. Okay. Let's go. Don't show anyone this video. That's terrible. She was like, this is so much harder. And she's like, my body just didn't feel right for ages. And like, I like running about and doing stuff. And like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not the right person to ask. But I, but I think with all of those kinds of decisions that it you you figure it out. You, you do what's right for you in the time. I think right. in right. every way, like you figure it out. I, I We can't spend too much time on it now because uh, because it's already like we're going to wrap it up soon. But I wanted to and still want to touch on a little bit your experience on episodes, mm. which is just such a such a funny show. And I there was improvising on it. Yeah, not on my part, really. None. Not re not a lot. Not really? very, very little. They are such incredible, meticulous writers yeah. that every pause they have thought about. Grammar. <laughs> Aaron Sorkin. Every, I mean, they have. Chuck Lorre. <laughs> is that how he works? I'm working. I did Aaron a, Sorkin does that. I did a even let you Intel, I did Intel commercials with Jim Parsons and we were improvising on it. And he was talking about improvising and that's a skill set he doesn't have. And we were talking about how he's on a multicam and he said, every comma, you can't say, it's it, it is if it says it's i mean everything must be it's not just not improvising it's word perfect which feels so complicated but to to I when mean, you have writers that are that good like it's it's the work is done for you i think that there's yes i i, I don't think it's stupid or mm. wrong to do that but th as a performer unless that's the type of performer you are but you want to bring yourself to it somewhat even if it's a character you want to bring some and sometimes changing phrasing a little bit helps mm -hmm. you tap in you know mm -hmm. um i'm surprised to hear that and and as a compliment to you it felt very mm. was that improvised oh, you know it good. felt very like they're not doing this yeah i would struggle with that it felt yeah like in the same way larry david you're like oh my god this is probably all happening like this yeah. is just them like no it was pretty baby. calculated that word doesn't sound, in a good way i mean truly like they have yeah. they they did the the work so it was just like my job to say what they I, I thought think, about something. I think that if that's what it is, it's really good you, you get good at that. Well. But it's also very good casting. To be able it's to great cast casting. People, yeah. I would like to rewatch. I haven't it's watched it. Uh, I haven't watched it in years. Me neither. And I, I finished before you guys filmed that last season that took place a little bit later. Yeah. So I still haven't watched the last season. Oh. I would rewatch oh, re uh, up it. to it. Yeah. Um, Wait, can I clarify something? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, Marseille is not my name. <laughs> 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 well <laughs> it's not <laughs> that's a whole thing um i just want to clarify about the potential the not working thing i think it because it both of your questions have been so good i think it's about no longer needing to do things to please anyone else to be thought of a certain way right. to be seen to say you're working right so when oh, that ego starts to drift away right. and it comes from what hopefully is a sort of more pure place that's what shifted for me which you're is like choosing. what i'm talking about you're choosing yes like not going to the wedding if you don't want to that's kind of what i'm talking about doing what you servicing yourself yeah yeah and and for me motivations like my motivations have not have not always been about art and th you know like i wanted right. certain things that i no longer strive for right. i also used to if someone said what are you working on i still will go <laughs> Like this, yeah. You just be like, even if I was on the biggest oh, thing ever. Oh, because you have to be working, or it has to be cool, or it has to be, and like, right? I that there's a residual teeny thing, but like, I'll just go nothing. Yeah, and it makes people so uncomfortable. Do you think that's a girl thing? Because I have that. None of my guy friends ever. I have guy that. friends that are like that. I think. Oh, it's really? In I have the, guy friends the, that are just like nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Fuck. That are in. The, in you're kind of trained to be like, if you're not hot right now like then you're yeah, not a value I guess your industry is different. but who's to say you couldn't be if you wanted to that's the thing i agree but nobody thinks that you know it's sort of this i've like, never been on the other way to feel like i need to hold on to it i mean not even right. being self-deprecating i'm yeah. just always making my own sketches or doing stand-up yeah. you know but that makes sense so i think that's what shifted for me is this the need ambition has not dissipated but the the 
motivation has shifted and that's what I'm reevaluating. So I'm coming at it from just a place of joy and inspiration. I'm I basically like 18 again. You know, it's changed. Yeah, I was going to say you're like again. your child and choosing. Yeah, you're just getting to choose. <laughs> it's like what's fun like. instead of what's going to pay this and what's going to do that and what's going to help my career. What's going to look good. Yeah. Based on your anyway. want to clarify, which I appreciate and understand, I also would then... If I made you Let's feel go back to the, the podcast the need, and reevaluate and clarify something. No, no, I want to make clarify the intention behind the question was I wasn't leading or you thinking. You think I'm that, a loser. I don't think you're a winner. <laughs> it's but I, it's just you're just right in the middle. No, my <laughs> questions for you were as somebody who wants to come here and and be in a relationship with somebody who is positioned here and who's in a similar industry and you know, I haven't been doing stand up much. I would get your visa so that you are not a hurdle to anybody. Like make it easy for them. So have your visa in place. The stuff we kind of talked about. I'll research more than I need to anyway. And I'll let you know everything I found out. And I'll tell you about SAG. Um, but I would have the answers to those things to then, you know, get any roadblock out of the way. Because there are some. Um, and there's no reason why you can't. Yes, it's it's hard enough to get work, let alone here. But that mentality, so what? Well, Anyone could have said that to us and we're on channels. I mean, whatever. So like- An American show. Yeah, and he also knows- <laughs> Finally, again. Like I always think this, there are so many people that are Americans that are famous in Australia that you guys don't even fucking It doesn't know. go the <laughs> other way. People, it doesn't go the other way. What do you mean? People, people come to America from Australia and from here and could talk like this. None of us could talk good enough so like this. So that's the thing for Stephen Show. Doggy is the years yes. is English accent. No, you don't like this. Well, no, I have a good English uh, accent. <laughs> you sound but Australian because you hang around with me and I've got a good well, no, English No, I know Australian. he's more down here. I... You sound like a deaf Australian when you do that. And there's so nothing wrong with that. I was going to do a part in Stephen Show and I was like, I can't. Oh, it's I quite can't. hard to do an English accent. Can I hear oh. you try? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> can't. You can't do it. Can't. But there is an actual, I mean, there's a dialect coach that is great if you do want to start to get better yeah. at it so you can work here. I should get a dialect know, coach to come on the podcast with me. Coach. Yeah, that's a good idea. When I was younger and I used to model, they used to make me go for ads and I used to get lots. So they used to make me go and see a dialect coach, like try and get rid of my Australian accent. For a print ad? No, for um, commercials. Oh, commercials. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I did it for um for the movie I did with David Wayne. I played Harold Ramis, and, mm. and a real person. And I met with uh, oh. three dialect coaches just for the audition mm -hmm. and found one and worked with it a little bit. But listen, you could work on your accent for that to do things. You're not, oh, I'm going to move to the UK and get famous there. You want to work to have this. Life. I want to be here and not feel bad that I'm still paying thousands of dollars a month rent. And I will say I'm very grateful. Yeah, but it's you don't make that much money stand up here until you're, you're Do established. Do you own your place in LA? No, that's can, the next step. Can you sublet it? I will not. You would never. I don't even want my friends dumping in the same toilet I'm at when it's my girlfriend's place. Also, I've had so many who will sublet this place and people are horrible. Like he's yeah. seen it from that end of me. But let, like, let me oh, say that stuff. this podcast has given me freedom mm -hmm. to travel and make money. The, I, I bought a one-way ticket here, uh, business class. And... They, they let you first. in with the one way? Yeah, it's crazy. They don't give a shit about Americans. I can't even step into the in America without like here all my return. I also money. think, and I'm not being cocky, I really think that they were a fan of the podcast when I bought the ticket. You So they let me do just that. Just for future though, I have gotten asked a lot for my return ticket pre-visa. So just be aware. even if Money you, wise or? To show it when you enter the border. Oh. So for the future, okay. even if you cancel it, sure I will yeah. have a return. The anyway. reason I bring that up is I will stay here until I have to go back if I get a job and or press for my show, or I need I need guests. You know, like yeah. as long as I could get so one person hard. a week to come over here and do this, I am justified to paying paying my rent. Yeah, yeah, so, I get it. I totally get it. It's so hard. But I think, to, but we can talk more about this because I really understand, and I think any information. I mean, a lot of it truly is way too boring for a podcast, but we can have lunch. I like we can all three of us have lunch and I can. Walk I need to through. podcast it, though. <laughs> I need it's to get so podcast. boring. I need no, content. But this is the problem. Getting guests here, I feel like is quite difficult. Also, like he's not with someone that can get him. My skill set is not knowing people in the industry. To be like, I would Hi. love if you really have a, uh, a dialect coach. I don't know yeah. what that yeah. would be like, but even <laughs> I could then edit it down and put it as like a segment in a podcast. Yeah. If he or she would be comfortable with it, I would love I mean, that would be fun. I've been yeah. wanting, I want to get a dialect coach and I want to get, because I have perfect pitch relatively, but I want to get, whatever. But uh, what, they have to be mostly actors that you're, or like, are you trying to interview mostly actors? Anybody that I am, am or would be genuinely, I, 
I want to ask questions that I want to ask, not to fill time. So as long yeah, as they're yeah. f- funny for sure, interesting, or in my field, like also just full transparency. There is I have advertisers. I want to bring people into the audience. Mm-hmm. It's not like I did just last week was an episode with my family. So I'll do whatever. But it is an advantage to have people that have already a built an audience. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And like Ashling Bay. Do you know Ashling? No, I, I don't know anything. She's the person I told you. She's been on my podcast before. She's the reason I came to London the first time. Oh, she sorry. Yes. Yeah. You'll but, know her show that she did. What was the show called? Uh, uh, on the way up. This way up. This way up with um, Paul Rudd. Oh, I'm so sinful. I don't know. I, she's, I never she's know anything. She's an Irish like comedian actress. Mm. But I bring that up because she, she might be coming on again. And if so, I'm gonna ask but her. Ask her about her friends. I am. Yeah. yeah, that's the plan. But it's like I could stay here as long as I get conversations. Well, not longer than six months. Yes. Put, put not only a, that, a troll hat on her. <laughs> but you should do less than. We'll talk about this off the podcast, but really there's like specific rules. What you don't want to do is fuck yourself later if you're trying to get a visa. This is what having I overstayed. About me. Okay, yes. yeah. Where I've said I have to leave or at least even leave a couple weeks before because otherwise it looks like I'm staying to the very end every time. I don't yeah, know what's like, boring. I'm interested in this, but also, yeah, we could talk about this stuff later. Yeah. it's, it's If like, you want to hear about visa stuff, so we know next time, leave some <laughs> comments that uh, great tutor joke. If you don't want to hear about the visa, say not interested in the visas. Well, but it, I mean, it's boring, but also it's stuff even before I moved, I was interested in like how... You just always hear like so and so moved to that place, and it's like it's it's complicated, and there's yeah. legal stuff, and you have to. My English friends and I, all we do is talk about visas in yeah. America. When we're in America, all we do is chat about our own visa situation, their visa situation. It's very difficult in America. But you learn, but it's great. You learn so in, much. Yeah. yeah, I know everything about visas in America, and I know a little bit here. I feel like you probably know much more. Than Taxes me. too. It's just a lot. It's just a, a whole thing. Difficult. Yeah, you I know to, a lot of people that have given up American just, passports. Just well, let me yeah. just do what I want to do, and who gives <laughs> I know. a shit? You have to pay taxes in both countries. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine because one offsets, but these you have are to pay taxes. You- if I make money here, and I'm just a resident here, I'm you're paying less taxes citizen. than if I'm a dual. If you're a dual citizen. You're paying both taxes. Well, they off one's offset by the other, yeah. so not technically. Right, it's just yeah. more paperwork. Yes. I, yeah, I don't know if other people are interested, but right now I'm on. gonna I'm literally gonna have a headache from it. <laughs> So I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> oh. And now I just became I'm not as I just became a little bit aware of myself. And I'm just, I, I, my, I don't know. I'm just like hot now. Um, would, would you ever do a podcast about like writing and like? I even was hesitant to come on this one. I don't feel like I have necessarily something to say that really? is. That's but, why you kept saying this is boring. <laughs> Seriously. It seemed well, like you were I, I don't mean to, it from insecure at all. I just feel like there's so many interesting, amazing people that I kind of feel like, I don't know. I don't know that what I, I would have to think about what I was contributing right. and make sure that it had value. Because right. even for this, it's like, I wanted to see you guys, but um, but it's not like I'm like, well, they're going to be lucky. I've, I've, this has been great. I feel really interesting. This yeah. has been great. Oh, thanks, Betty. Yeah. Uh, uh, getting the bee off your hair. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel you. I, I, th- th- there's a pressure of like, this podcast has helped me realize how much not everything needs to be great. You right. know, this isn't an hour special. This is just, it's helped me very much. But, but don't sti- you think so much, like, I don't know. I just feel like so many people are talk. Like, I don't know. I just don't know. Do you think Same. you have such an interesting perspective? Like you're coming from the States. You're dating someone here. You've worked in the industry. You're now transitioning here. You have like all these different hats that you wear. Don't you think that that's... You know what I would like to do? What? Some kind of show or podcast about home maintenance. <laughs> that's funny because he has a... He does YouTube things about like fixing his fridge and stuff like that. It's like Ricky, Ricky does. But are they I'm, genuinely I'm, helpful? Yes, he literally. Let me, let me pitch this to you. I want to know how okay, to do stuff. Okay, this is my dream. I'm already in. I'm I want to know how to do <laughs> stuff. So we, we should, you know, we should, I mean, mount the TV with me. But yeah. but here's the thing. I When you want to know how to do something, you go on YouTube. Yes. I already talked about this the episode with you and Eric oh, Griffin. And the dad. Dad, you know, dad, how do I? Dad, yeah. how do I? Yeah, like the, for people who didn't have dads. Watch it every like, night. People that didn't. Yeah. What to do. Oh, that's do you really watch it all the time? I watch I was Did you I watch it for thing? hours. Mm, debatable. Yeah, see I had that thing where you I was like, was a podcast not about told. your dads. But even regardless of <laughs> fathers of, or per- Maybe that's why I'm dating you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> still you dating guys. you. Still still dating. <laughs> you never broke up with him. I had no idea. <laughs> Technically we never broke up. <laughs> I don't think there was an official I don't know. You Cut say. to me standing outside your door with like my letterman's jacket <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if now's the right time. And we're back. Um but regards for that, just being taught like Parents aren't, there's a lot of amazing parents who don't know how to hang a TV, yeah. but I do think, so I, um, we bought this house in London and it, there, I have, so because Steven's been so busy, I've not only taken over the house maintenance, 
Um, but I basically, there's like three, we have three small companies I've been running for us. Like I've right. been doing all of these things. And I was like, there's got to be a way to have sort of like a how-to guide. And so anyway, so back to the house, I've been watching plumbing, like my water, my hot water was out today and there's boiler issues. Right. And every time somebody comes, no matter how good they are, I have my list and we go back through it and like, yeah, you I learn to, to ask like, questions. Check this. Yes. Yeah. And then, and the amount, the amount of times I've been right has given me so much confidence about yeah. this kind of stuff. You guys so. should definitely do this. He's just, I'm gonna send you the fridge one. He literally changed the circuit board in his fridge. First thing you wanna do is clear the room. Then say, sorry for how loud this is gonna be. Brilliant. Oh. Um, it was incredible. It. Yeah, he ordered it online as well because the guy was like, it's gonna be how much? I want, when I, I look up YouTube videos and yeah. the first two minutes is, what's everybody, it's Rodney. Oh. Welcome back to fixing my dick yeah. with my clit. Today we're gonna learn, and if you wanna make sure you click the, and it's so, and then you gotta find the section. The information. So, so I want to either just, I talked about this on another episode, but I, I had a, a hard boiled egg maker. There's two things, you could turn it this way or this way. You know what I'm talking about already? I, I keep going. I don't I remember which machine. one. The, the, uh, there's two random symbols. Which one is it? I found a video that's like 20 seconds. Yes. Hey everybody, this one warms it. I wanted to like invite him on the podcast. Brilliant. Yeah. So I want to make them that are either just short, which I, because people would do that. But what I would want to do is make the thing fucking great. Make it a piece of content. Like, hey, we're going to fix the fridge and we're going to become friends while we do it. Mm. You know, like something that is interesting or funny. So I thought... So I learned how to, I've never did it before. So I did it also this. demystifies. If you can lighten it, it's not so scary or overwhelming. It's all it's yeah. all okay. Yeah, they're doing it with. And yeah. Also, they're doing I it with me. I watched his and I was like, I could probably change the circuit. I never done like. it before, and I looked up how to do it. And I said, here's what I found. Let's figure it out. And then you know, you edit out a lot of the stuff that doesn't have to be there. Mm -hmm. You just keep the jokes, the setup, or the instruction. Well, you two with hard hats on, being like, <laughs> this is how you mount. But not, but in like a real. I want something that I've been trying to find. And besides dad, how do I, which is mm -hmm. great You're and helpful. Good. And he does the angles and stuff. And it's, he also wrote a book and it's like about how to balance a checkbook and all these is things. Is it home makeover stuff though? Like, no, it's like skill, like life skills. So it's not just know. about the house. Yeah. It's doing your taxes. Well, it, it's grown because he has yeah. like 3 million people now. I'm so, saying you, what do you want? Okay. Oh, I feel me. like my mom right now. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in the house maintenance. <laughs> this, is where, this is where I'm going. I'm really interested in the house maintenance stuff. And also help it like how it correlates to whoever might need that. But I have an especial, uh, especially have a soft spot for um, youth who may not have guidance right. and what they might need. What are you okay? Mean? I don't know. Get the Look at it. I'm like. Are you just hot? Or are you okay? I feel fine, but I'm, I'm so, you know what it feels like? It feels like. Like a hot flash, like a menopausal head, woman. It, when you're, the head, the blood is rushing to your head. Are you. It's but adrenaline. Is, yeah, like Why? is something Why? making you. Not that I'm aware of. It just, I noticed it when I took my headphones off. It felt like. Sometimes Rick doesn't understand the, the difference between like excitement and like anxiety. I have noticed mm. that in him where I'm like, I think you're just But excited. I don't feel, I feel, yeah, you, I mean, you know, th this is the cold open. I feel fine, <laughs> but there's something going on. With my body. <laughs> it's just, it feels like my head, it feels like maybe head that, but. You also it is hot. Eat, he's it eating is hot. a piece of toast today. I That's have probably it. Your blood sugar just. Is cause an adrenaline surge. Well, we're almost. Yeah, when aren't your we? blood sugar drops, that's why it wakes you up at night. When your blood sugar drops so low, you release adrenaline in order to like get you to go and get food. So that's why it'll happen in the evening. Mm. The way you are with like your, I think I could do this. Like I, I'm better. Is how I am with medical stuff. So oh. I went and studied nutrition and like dietetics. It's been really nice. But now me. I'll go she into doctors, even with my mom, and I'm like, I don't think you have it right. I think you need to check this. <laughs> and they're always like, Well, we don't really. And I'm like, Just. If, humor me and check and it ch but is that like, because you you just what read a lot of i was obsessed with it when i was younger yeah and then i went into clinic after i did nutrition and like went to like a medical clinic oh wow oh so I'm you've like, been around with, it. With, i mean yeah yeah you grew up you grew up ill too so you have a yes and i grew up thanks with, thanks rick and my kidneys were failing when i was younger so i was in hospitals very young and like living in hospital you know like speaking of house maintenance our house keeps breaking and so I took, I was like, well, it was built in 1850 and clearly someone is upset that I'm here. Oh so yeah. I saged the oh, entire, I'm like, I'm here for peace and you're welcome to be here, but please. Do a sage YouTube video. Stay with us. Please don't, yeah. <laughs> please stop breaking the boiler. <laughs> uh, if you want to know a woman that actually does that, 
Her name is Wendy Mandy. I might need her. And she's really incredible. Although... Can she do my boiler room? <laughs> yeah, she could. Although she, Hugh Grant once went on like a late night show and kind of like ragged her out a bit. He was like, I had this woman come and oh. like do my house. And he's like, he was kind of making fun of her. Although she does do it and she's very good. I love all that stuff. So I can send you, her to you. I'll see. I don't know. The plumber has to come today and then we'll see if it gets If not, <laughs> if the ghost gets him and can then we we'll get see. him on the pod? <laughs> Woo! He's very good. The plumber. I think there was something to the coffee, a little orange juice. Yeah, it blood sugar. Did you eat food food though? I had a couple of bites of pasta and orange juice. It feels like something's going on in my head, but like, oh, so much yeah, better. Yeah, your blood sugar. Yeah. But we're almost, you're, you down. can lay down. I mean, we're, yeah. Well, we need a, we, a this, oh, this podcast it always has a really big ending. Oh, um, sing and dance. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could do what you could flesh out. <laughs> pun intended. Not intended, but I want to pretend I knew it in advance. You're full um, masturbating the Ken doll. I'm assuming it's a Ken doll, right? Oh, that yeah. bit. Well, no, it was, yeah, it was Barbie doing. I don't remember the exact bit. It was just, it was, my point was that it was very amateur jokes that weren't really well refined. Cut to my special where I close it's with like it and all. just people fuck it. It's kills. <laughs> and then he, he jerked him off. And people are wearing jerked him off wearing like Barbie doll shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have been trying to make, so I would also do bits sort of about acting but it's not as narcissistic as it sounds but there's something really funny i think in it like some of the films i've done like reeker about a man who smelled etc they changed the title but there's funny things and you could there's Wait, a lot of real film he did or that's a joke film no it's real but he also had a chainsaw so there's a lot going oh, okay. on but also <laughs> you guys can you smell that it was a lot of that and then <laughs> so but there's film so the, to back it up and there's fun. So anyway, that was, but I think there's a fun way to put that into some kind of a, like a show. one woman show. So I've been, Isn't I have it, it like technically half still called a one man show? Yeah. I always no. say one woman. I mean, I don't know. Should it matter? No. I mean. I want to talk about, I want to end the podcast with something that's been on my mind and it's, it's a controversial topic and a lot of people are talking topic. about it, but I don't think anybody really has the right point of view on it. And I don't think enough people <laughs> put it out there and tell the truth. Or I think we should do this uncensored, candid, exactly the way it's supposed to be. And here's my question for you. Women in this industry or any industry for that matter, really have a difficult time because then it's sexualized. You know, they're, they're not taking from anything. They are like, oh yeah. Oh, and she has a brain. Yeah, no doubt. That pay. The pay? The, the, you know what? Even if you're not in comedy, it's a, still the biggest joke in the world because you don't get paid enough. Mm -hmm. So here's my question for you. What could we do, the three of us, starting today? To help gender equality? Just to stop women from fucking getting in the way. And being so annoying. <laughs> just I let us know. film the show, just sweetheart. shut up. What's wrong with being a pair of tits? At least you got them. Listen, give them to me. Well, joking aside, part of what I would love to do in like sort of one woman show is talk about sort of at points how I sexualized myself or exploited myself depending on the job maybe for a joke maybe not your character in episodes was Special. that yeah, 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 yeah. But i mean for the joke of it yeah of course so i think there's something funny about like and where's that line Ooh, you know? and you could close it by having the uh, uh, revealing that the director of your show got paid more than you he should have <laughs> <laughs> i mean an actor worked like two days a week it's very cool of you. <laughs> very cool of you i mean if you're working you know yes I have such a new respect. Like, I've always respected, like, but I mean, we've got it. When we're acting, we got it pretty good. You check in, check out. Especially yeah. a multi cam. Sweet spot number four. I mean, I know six lead. I know that's your thing. But I like being number four. That's cool. I yeah, the six lead. Check it out by the way. He's six, six lead dot com. You know, but uh, do you have merch? Where's my merch? Look to camera and snap. Do it again. I'm sorry. Sorry. Do it again. Don't but, react to the. Uh, react after the snap because. That's snap, a, the react. snap is a transition. Snap, half a beat, react. react. Ready? Yes. <laughs> Keep all this in. <laughs> okay, okay. Ready, ready, ready? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Where'd you get this? RickGlassman.com? Why'd you say it like you were reading it? I, comedic choice? I didn't. Wow. <laughs> Love you know, that sweatshirt. Uh, merch makes you a very uncomfortable performer. By the way, keep it in the first snap and then show the behind the scenes there. <laughs> That's nice, right? No, it is very cute. Can can they see? I don't know. What's it say? Oh, take your shoes off. Yeah. What's yeah. up? <laughs> <sighs> What's the name of the podcast? Um, I really like this. This is the second piece of merch I've gotten from you. You gave me someone's sloppy second merch. Ooh. I have a hoodie that says Whitney on it. That's so funny. Oh, you said you wanted it. I love it. Yeah, so so I gave everybody who worked on the six lead a hoodie right. with the names on it. And Whitney was guest starring for a few weeks right. when I was giving them out. Uh, and 
I never gave it to her because by I the time I got it. was in your car or something, but I was like, can I have it? Yeah, I think it was in my car. Right. You wanted a hoodie. I and thought I you gave like a Whitney. No, it was, it was a, the six lead hoodie, right, yeah. but it was meant for Whitney and I never gave it to her. Right. That's so funny. Yeah. And people always ask because it says it. Like, so hey, people always ask. Yeah. You still wear it? <laughs> All the time. Quality merch. It's And it's warm and it's thick. It's great for London winters, working out in the park. And that's Love at it. Rick. Well, actually, I don't sell those. Rick Glassman. But you can get six lead t shirts. You can get this. Take your shoes off. Do you have any websites or merch you want to post? No. Or share? No, I don't really do social media. But you can go to Rick He's Glassman. Such an artist. RickGlassman.com and get your merch. All right. Now for the big finish. Uh, now scoot do. Ready? Uh, with it, I'll sing it. Yeah, I'll do it with Scooby you. Scooby Doo. No, no, no. I Scoot meant. Scoot the Betty Boo. I don't know that, but it, it's, I feel like you're gonna peek on the audio. I'm not peeking. I'm, okay. I, I would hear if I was peeking. Okay, but it's very, very loud. Okay. <laughs>